Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 241, Unidentified Flying Scotsman. One evening, Sir Topham Hatt and Elizabeth arrived back at Tidmouth Sheds. It had been a busy day. Thank you for taking me to visit Winston at the works. His repairs should be completed any day now, and I would like to get him back on the tracks as soon as possible. Of course, Topham. I know you can't wait to get rid of an old thing like me. Nonsense, Elizabeth. I have greatly appreciated your help these past few months. But as we both know, you are rather looking forward to your life of retirement at Topham Mansion. Pa, I'd be the first to know something like this, interrupted Gordon. Need I remind you I'm his own brother? Whoa, what's all the commotion? Why aren't you all resting like you should be? Thank goodness you're here, sir. The engines are trying to tell me that my brother, the Flying Scotsman, has been spotted back on Sodor. And I told them that was impossible. He's still on the mainland receiving repairs. Isn't that right? Sir Topham Hatt shrugged. I'm not sure, Gordon. The mainland railway doesn't keep me up to date on the status of their engines. Just like when he went away, we didn't know what was initially going to happen to him. Of course, we later found out he was being overhauled and preserved, a rare occurrence over there. But I haven't heard anything new in quite some time. Gordon blinked slowly. Right then. Well, I, I appear to have been mistaken. My apologies, everyone, for not believing you. It's just, you'd think I'd be the first to know about things like this. Here I am, his only remaining brother. Yes, we know you're related, chuckled Edward. You mention it at every possible moment. Now can we please get some sleep? Edward is right. It's time to get some rest. I will see you all tomorrow morning. Gradually, the engines began to fall asleep, except for Henry and James. Hey, Henry, you think we should play a trick on Gordon over there? I mean, sure, why not, yawned Henry. It's been a while since we put him in his place. All this talk about being the flying Scotsman's brother, it just gets old, you know? Exactly. You saw how frustrated he was when he thought the Flying Scotsman was back on Sodor, and he didn't know about it. Let's keep at it and really drive him crazy. How do you suppose we do that? Well, it'll take a bit of sacrifice on my part, and a bit of acting on yours. But if this works, we'll be the talk of the railway for weeks to come. The engines chuckled quietly and started scheming. The next day, James puffed into the steamworks. What can we do for you, James? Finally decided to get rid of that obnoxious red paint. Hey, it's scarlet red, mind you. Now listen, I haven't been feeling well lately, and I think it's about time for a routine checkup. Flush out my pipes, redo my lining, all that good stuff. The workmen laughed. We don't have time to mess around with an engine like you, with Vinny still here and everything. Just then, Victor puffed in. I'll tell him what you said about red paint, whispered James. Your wish is our command, they exclaimed. Let's get your tender unhooked and started on everything. Just then, Henry puffed up. I'll take this, thank you very much. Have a nice holiday, James. I'll see you in a few days. James whistled and sighed happily at the thought of being pampered for the weekend. Meanwhile, Henry took James's tender to the yard where some painters had set up shop. I want this tender to be painted green with the number three on it, please. The painters were confused. Like, like that one right there? Yes, I need an extra, just in case something happens, you know. It's a dangerous railway out there. Hey, didn't I fall on your cap one time? Nevertheless, the painters got to work. Later that day, Rosie was preparing to leave Vickerstown Station when suddenly... Oh boy, there he is! 
That's the Flying Scotsman. Gordon will be so happy to know he's back. I must tell him right away. Gordon was delighted to hear the news. He immediately raced to the station, only to find an empty and deserted platform. Well, this is impossible. Where has he gone? Surely Rosie wouldn't lie to me about something like this. Just then, Marion arrived. You're not going to believe this, Gordon, but I just saw the Flying Scotsman at the docks. I believe your brother is back on Sodor. Ah, oh, just barely missed him then. Thank you for the update, Marion. I must reunite with him at once. But when Gordon puffed into the docks, the Flying Scotsman was nowhere to be found. Not again. Salty, Porter, did you see the Flying Scotsman puff through here recently? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. We're swamped with trucks and haven't had time to look around. Maybe Bill and Ben know something? Turns out the twins did. Oh yes, he looked very splendid, Gordon. With his two tenders and all, he was just a blur as he raced by, but I definitely recognized him. Hmm, so it is true then. I wonder where he's off to next. You guys talking about the Flying Scotsman? asked Derek. I just passed him coming from the Diesel Works. Maybe you should check there. The Diesel Works? Why on earth would the Flying Scotsman waste his time showboating around that dump of a place? But still, Gordon was out of luck. The Flying Scotsman was nowhere to be found. You're looking for the Flying Scotsman? asked Diesel. Why on earth would he waste his time showboating around this dump of a place? That's what I said! Oh, never mind. It was foolish of me to think he would be here at all. But he has to be on the railway. I mean, all of the engines I've talked to today can't possibly be lying to me. That would be a most elaborate plan. You guys aren't going to believe this, exclaimed Mavis. The Flying Scotsman is taking a tour of Thomas's branch line. How unexpected is that? Oh, this is ridiculous. I know my brother and this is not like him at all. Something is up. Gordon spent the rest of the day trying to locate the Flying Scotsman, but he was unsuccessful. He arrived back at the shed sad and exhausted. Well, I have had the most horrendous of days. And it all started because of you, Rosie. You lied to me about the Flying Scotsman's appearance at Vickerstown, and I've been chasing him around the island ever since. I didn't lie, she stammered. You don't think I wouldn't recognize the most famous engine in the world? I saw him at Vickerstown, with his two tenders and all. Henry chuckled. Sounds like you just missed him, Gordon. And to think, your own brother is keeping his existence a secret from you. I smell a family feud brewing. Oh, that's it. Tomorrow morning, I will set out first thing and locate my brother, if it's the last thing I do. It took all of Henry's might to keep from chuckling. A few days later, however, his plan began to unravel. Henry, I keep hearing stories from the passengers about how an engine is impersonating the Flying Scotsman on the railway. You, uh, <clears throat> wouldn't happen to know anything about this, would you? Oh, no, sir, he spluttered. I haven't heard anything like that. But I am flattered that the passengers are confusing me with a most famous engine like him. Where do they come up with these ideas? Just then, Gordon puffed in. I give up, he announced loudly. I can't take it anymore. No matter where I go or how quick I am, I just can't catch the Flying Scotsman. And it's been days since he was first spotted. Neville just said he's at Knapford Station, and my word, there he is! At last, I've done it! Gordon, how nice it is to see you. I just got done being mended and immediately raced over the bridge to come see you. How have you been? Tell me the news. But Gordon was feeling sulky. 
I know you're lying, but I can't stay mad at you, my brother. It's been too long. And my word, your restoration has turned you into a completely new engine. You look better than ever. Why don't you believe me? It's true. I just got done being repaired only a few hours ago. You really don't think I'd seek out another engine on Sodor before talking to you? Well, apparently you've been on Sodor all week talking to everyone else but me. I mean, the diesel works? Thomas's branch line? You really had to see all of those places before you saw me? The flying Scotsman laughed. I have no idea what you're talking about, Gordon. You must be confusing me with another engine. Oh, right, like there's another green engine with two tenders on Sodor. Henry smirked and let off steam. Well, it's about time I gave James his tender back. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Gordon. He let me borrow it for a few days. But I do believe the Flying Scotsman is onto something about this too tender business. It's rather nice, I must admit. And Henry puffed away with his two tenders plainly in sight. Gordon was beside himself. Well, I never. Henry's been playing me for a fool this entire week. He's been playing everybody on the railway, I believe. And here I thought I was a unique, iconic engine. One of a kind, they say. Well, never mind that. It's good to see you again. Surely you'll be staying for a while, right? I'll be splitting my time between the mainland and Sodor. While I am extremely thankful that my railway decided to save me, I can't help but feel like Sodor is where a steam engine truly belongs in this day and age. So, like it or not, you and I will be pulling some trains side by side. Gordon was ecstatic. Even after a nasty prank, the engines couldn't take away his joy. He was incredibly happy to see his brother, the Flying Scotsman, once again. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 242, Tender Love and Care. Sir Topham Hatt was not amused with James and Henry's latest prank. You will return James's tender at once, he said sternly. There is a lot of honest work to be done on this railway, and I will not tolerate your shenanigans. Yes, sir, whimpered Henry. And I expect you to make up for the work you've missed while you've been pretending to be the Flying Scotsman. That means you'll be covering your own trains as well as James's until he gets back. I'd recommend getting this tendered to him as soon as possible so that he can help you with the work. Yes, sir. Uh, of course, sir. That would be the smart thing to do. Just then, the guard's whistle blew over at the platform. Oh, that's my train. I don't have time to run this all the way across the island. If only there was an engine that would go return it for me. Diesel, would you? Absolutely not, he replied. Yeah, I know. It was worth a shot. What about us? came a voice. Henry looked around. There were Bill and Ben, looking as eager as ever. Oh no, not you two. I can't trust you twins. You're what we call a liability. A lia, lia what? Yeah, what's Billy lying about? It means you're a burden, sniffed Diesel. Can't be held responsible for anything important. Well, that's just not true. We handle our business at the Sodor China Clay Works quite professionally. Yeah, just ask Gordon. We helped him find his brother the other day, which I guess was actually you in disguise. Which means you messed up and can't be trusted. Oh, I don't have time to argue about this. Just take James's tender back to the Steamworks, will you? And be nice to it. An engine's tender is very important. You must treat it with love and care. Bill and Ben looked at each other and giggled. Would you say this counts as a special special? Well, of course it does. No, it doesn't. 
This isn't an important job. You're a glorified mailman, that's all. But the twins only became happier. Hooray! We've always wanted to be like Tom Tipper. Diesel rolled his eyes and left. Bill and Ben's enthusiasm could not be smothered. We must do everything in our power to return this tender to James in pristine condition. And that would mean filling it up with coal, of course. You're right, Ben. If I lent my tender out to another engine, I would want them to return it looking better than it originally was. Let's head over to the coal depot before we set off. But there were lots of trucks in the area, and Bill and Ben had to wait their turn. What have you guys got there? asked Hector. It looks like a special coal car. Bill chuckled. You could say that. We want to fill it up before we leave on our journey. Say no more. Just leave it here for Logan and he'll fill it up for you. Bill and Ben were happy to get out of the coal dust. They decided to wait at the station for Logan to return. James will be so pleased when we come puffing in with his tender looking all nice and full. Then he can go back to being a really useful engine. Or whatever he does on this railway. Well, lately he's been a really lazy engine. He's gotten to sit at the steamworks all week while the rest of the engines have covered his trains. Donald puffed in and laughed. You don't say. This was supposed to be James's train. But here I am, doing his work like always. Toodles, twins. The engines laughed at Donald's comment. Until... Oh, uh, Bill, isn't that our tender right there? No, that's a line of red coal cars. Oh, wait, that is James's tender. Logan must have included it in the train by accident. Wait, Donald, wait. The twins attempted to race after him, but they crashed into each other and derailed. Hey, watch where you're going. Me? This is your fault. I was going to lead the way. The engines argued relentlessly as they were put back onto the track. I'm sorry about the confusion, said Logan. I didn't realize that was James's tender. I mean, how many times do you see a tender out and about without its engine? But Bill and Ben weren't speaking to each other. If we'd taken the tender straight to the steamworks, like Henry had asked, we wouldn't be in this position right now. Don't put this on me. You agreed it was a good idea to fill it up before we left. Ahem, if I may, interrupted Boko, I think you two should figure out where Donald is headed so that you can get your tender back as quick as possible. That's, that's not a bad idea, admitted Bill. I was going to say something like that. No, you were going to somehow blame me again. Easy, both of you. Let's ask the station master if he knows the schedule. But the station master returned with bad news. Looks like Donald is on his way to the mainland with that shipment of coal. He could be over the Vickerstown Bridge by now. Oh, this is terrible. James's tender is gone forever. We'll never be asked to do anything important ever again. The twins puffed somberly away down the line. I can't bear to face Sir Topham Hat tonight at Tidmouth Sheds. Let's stay here until we figure out what to do. Well, we have to give something to James. Otherwise, he'll know we've lost his tender. Maybe we can find some spare parts here in the scrapyard and come up with something. And look, those are the painters from earlier. I bet they would be willing to help us out. Sure enough, the painters agreed, and Reg found an old flatbed in the trash heap. It was quickly disguised to look like James's tender. Well, it's not the ugliest thing I've seen, but it's not the prettiest either, and I think the sizing is a bit off. Yeah, it's made from pieces of scrap, so what do you expect? Oh, we don't have time to find something else. Let's get this to James before we're any later. The twins were very nervous when they puffed up. There's your tender, James. Just like how it always looks. Nothing weird going on here. Shh! Be quiet! You'll give us away! 
About time, you know. Jeez, I lend Henry my tender for a few days, and he thinks he can keep it for a week. The workmen, however, weren't so convinced. Did I shrink, or is this tender, like, really tall? And where did you find the wheels on this thing? All right, back to work, I suppose. Thanks for everything, boys. As James slowly backed up, the tender wobbled uncertainly on the rails. He quickly came to a stop. Something's not right. My tender's way bigger than it should be. I can't even see behind me. Don't look at us, said the workman. We didn't change a thing. James glared at Bill and Ben. What did you two do with my tender? We, we may have adjusted a few things. It fits more coal in there than it used to. Yes, but it also weighs more and looks ridiculous. I can't puff around the railway with this thing attached to me. Why, you two! Just then, Donald rushed in and crashed into James's tender, knocking it off the rails. Oh, no! My tender! My beautiful, beautiful tender! What? You just said you hated it! Losh sakes, James! Watch where you're swinging that thing, would ya? You're about punning me off the rails. Wait, it's Donald, exclaimed Ben. Maybe he still has James's old tender on his train. Sure enough, there was James's original tender. Bill and Ben were very happy. What are you doing here, Donald? We thought you were taking these cars to the mainland. I am on my way to the mainland, with a few stops before I get there. Including the works. Ya lucky ducklings better be thankful I didn't leave Sodor since I apparently had James's tender with me the entire time. Speaking of which, you two lost my tender and tried to replace it with a fake? We, we were only trying to get you back to work. Yeah, just be glad we gave you something at all. You're the one who thought it would be fun to loan your tender out and play a trick on the entire railway. If Sir Topham Hat were here, he'd say you've been causing a lot of confusion and delay recently. James looked around nervously. Well, I... Y you see, well... They have a point, you know, James. I wouldn't be angry if I were you. I'd be getting back to work, starting with this coal train. Now that you're back in service, my work here is done. Come on, twins, let's go get some rest for the evening. Bill and Ben smiled and puffed away while James was left to clean up the mess. A very fitting way to get back to work on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 243. Dustin the Really Useless Engine It was the middle of summer on the island of Sodor and the engines were sweltering in the heat. The search and rescue team was on high alert for any wildfires that might start and spread rapidly due to the high temperatures. Everyone was at the ready. Everyone except Dustin. I feel so useless, he said sadly. There's no ice for me to clear for the next several months. What am I going to do to stay useful? Cheer up, said Belle. You're still a part of the search and rescue team, even if there's no snow to remove. You do get quite the workout in the winter. I think you deserve a rest when summer comes around. But Dustin wasn't so convinced. He wandered around Sodor looking for something to do. Maybe I could help on Thomas's branch line, he thought. Percy and the other engines make it sound like so much fun. But the farm animals didn't like Dustin's big snowplow, and they wouldn't come anywhere near him. Please don't be afraid. I know I look different, but I'm just like every other engine out there. Next, Dustin puffed into the yard. Stafford was looking quite overworked. Is there anything I can do to help here? Well, yes, now that you mention it. The electric station only lets me charge during certain times of the day due to the heat, but they keep shutting off the power while I'm plugged in. 
Whatever, just get rid of your snowplow and we'll get to work. Dustin was confused. Oh, I, I can't get rid of my snowplow. You see, it's attached to me. I would if I could, believe me. Stafford's smile disappeared. Oh, in that case, I'm sorry, Dustin, but you need to have buffers and a front coupler to shunt trucks. I mean, you could pull them everywhere, but that would be very inconvenient and take a lot of time. Dustin sighed. It's all right, I understand. Well, thanks for trying to think of something. Ari and Bert giggled to themselves. This engine has a guaranteed excuse to never shunt trucks again, and he's still looking for work. Steam engines are weird. Dustin was just about out of ideas, but he decided to visit the quarry. What are you doing here, Dustin? asked Marion. I've come to look for work. You see, my propeller does a wonderful job of removing snow and ice from the tracks in the winter. And I was thinking I could get rid of any rocks you have laying on the line. Hmm, that's an interesting idea, said Timothy. We do get a fair amount of debris on the track, but I'm afraid it's just too dangerous. Rocks and snow are very different. Your snowplow will send the pebbles shooting in every direction. Someone could get hurt. Dustin sighed. You're right. It was a foolish idea. Thanks anyway. Dustin was devastated. I'm a completely useless engine. Sir Topham Hat will surely send me away now. Hey, you, snowplow thing, would you stop and listen to what I have to say? My name is Dustin, mind you, and you're Bolstrode, right? You got put here because you're a menace to the railway. Oh, of course. That's what everybody thinks. Listen, you see that tugboat there? I saw something very interesting this morning that I think Sir Topham Hatch should know about. And I've tried to flag down one of you engines to stop, but nobody will take the time to listen to me. Dustin chuckled. I know what it's like to be overlooked. The least I could do is go get you some help. Later that day, Dustin returned with Sir Topham Hatt and Elizabeth in tow. This better be good, Bolstrode. I'm a very busy man and... Oh, believe me, sir. You'll be thankful when you've taken the time to listen to this. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt noticed the tugboat that was beached by the track. I know this vessel, he said quietly. Last time I saw it, it was sailing away from this very island with a despicable pirate behind the wheel. Bolstrode was shocked. How did you know that? I was about to tell you about that pirate guy, Sailor Jonathan or something. He smashed into me overnight and fled the scene. It was a hit and run, I tell ya. Sailor Jonathan, quizzed Elizabeth. It's Sailor John, actually. And it looks like he's back. Come along, Dustin. We have some urgent matters to attend to. Hey, what about me? gasped Bolstrode. Don't I get something for telling you all this? I'll send for a crew to put you back into service, Bolstrode. Thank you for the information. Bolstrode winked at Dustin. Told you it'd be worth it. And guess what? You're not looking so useless after all. Dustin managed a smile. He quickly followed Sir Topham Hatt to the docks. Telephone the mainland. Please tell them that Sailor John has returned to Sodor. They'll know who he is. Harold, I need a rotating search party checking the main line all throughout the day. Cranky, can you please? What's going on? whispered Dustin. What's so bad about this pirate? Your guess is as good as mine. But in all my years, I've never seen Topham this concerned about anything. Excuse me, came a voice. I'm looking for the controller of the railway. Dustin gasped. That looks like a pirate to me. Over there, Sir Topham Hatt. Is that the man you're looking for? But Sir Topham Hatt was confused. No, it's not. 
In fact, I do not know this gentleman. May I help you, sir? The man smiled. So you're the Sir Topham Hatt. My word, I'd hoped we meet under different circumstances, but this will have to do. I just arrived on that ship there, and I... Oh, where are my manners? Please call me the Admiral. You don't know who I am or what I do, but you shall find out in due time. I understand you have a situation with a pesky pirate. Sailor John, is that correct? Sir Topham Hatt gasped. Yes, that's right. How do you know about him? Sailor John and I are quite acquainted with one another. We each have a long history stretching to the very corners of the globe. I'm what you would call a treasure hunter, or rather, a treasure protector. Sailor John plunders for glory and riches. I look for artifacts to give to museums. If I must steal buried treasure in order to stop him, then that is what I do. Which is why I'm here, actually. Your island is home to some of the greatest mysteries and artifacts of recent times, with many areas yet to be explored. I've been following Sailor John for a long time, and was trying to predict his next conquest. It seems he beat me to the punch, having landed on the beach earlier this morning. I just happened to see the tugboat when the ship was docking. Sir Topham Hatt was shocked. You seem to know everything about the island. Have you been spying on us? I've kept a close eye on Sodor ever since Sailor John escaped here last time. He traveled around and bragged endlessly about everything he'd found here, even though he wasn't actually able to steal any of it. But he made a vow to return, and he's back, just like he promised. Well, this is terrible news for the railway. The last time he was here, Sailor John threatened the engines and the passengers. He recruited followers. He blew up railway tracks. We practically had to shut down the entire island. But it doesn't have to be like that this time. Let me take care of him and get him off your island. Are, are you sure? This Sailor John fellow didn't leave so quietly last time. Yes, that is his nature, but I've known him for ages. And unless you want to completely shut down your railway again to go after him, I am your best option. Sir Topham Hatt was surprised. But why do you want to help us? You've apparently never been to Sodor up until today. Any treasure that Sailor John finds will never reach a museum. I believe it is my duty to do my best to stop him. The only thing I ask for is your complete cooperation. I need your engines to help me, and I need them to know that I am not like Sailor John. Well, of course. We will not impede in your activities in the slightest. In fact, it gives me great relief to know that someone is going to do something about Sailor John again. I had no idea the tugboat was there until Dustin alerted me. The Admiral smiled. A snow removal engine? In the middle of summer? I bet you don't have a lot of work to do right now. I'll need a way to get around your island, sir. Mind if I borrow Dustin here as my private engine for now? Sir Topham Hatt chuckled. Not at all. I know Dustin has been struggling to find some suitable work lately, but I doubt he will complain at an opportunity like this. Dustin could hardly contain his excitement. You won't regret this, sir. We'll be the best treasure hunting team the island has ever seen. Sir Topham Hatt smiled. You have my full cooperation, Admiral. I'll even set up a residence for you on the island so that you may conduct your business professionally. It will be a pleasure to assist you in your fight against Sailor John. Much obliged, sir. Looks like I'll be trading my water vessel for a new type of craft for the foreseeable future. Come along, Dustin. We have a lot of work to do. Dustin's smile had never been brighter. He was very much looking forward to a second chance on the Sodor Railway. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, 
Episode 244, Bold Slow Coach. News about the railway's latest visitor spread all over the island. Supposedly, he introduced himself as the Admiral, said Rosie. Do you think that's his real name? quizzed James. Probably not, but it makes him sound important. Kind of like the Flying Scotsman. Oh, shush, Gordon, you're making me blush. Spencer wasn't so convinced. He probably wants an excuse to park his luxury liner at Brendam Docks for everyone to see. Not that I would do the same thing with a magnificent vessel like that. The Admiral seems like a well-traveled man, Spencer. I wonder if your Duke and Duchess are familiar with him. No, apparently not, but that doesn't concern me, really. I intend to make my own impression. Gordon and the Flying Scotsman looked at each other. You're going to make friends with a treasure hunter? Treasure protector, actually. His words, not mine. It's a rather grand profession, if you ask me. I'm sure I could be of assistance in some manner. Perhaps the Admiral would like a private tour of Sodor in my special coach. I do know all the best secret sightings for taking midday naps. There might be some valuable trinkets nearby to be discovered. Rosie laughed. Haven't you heard? Sir Topham had appointed Dustin as his private engine. Spencer was shocked. Well, I don't believe it. That shovel gets to show that fantastic man around the railway? Oh, the indignity. How original, muttered Gordon. Well, this just won't do. A man like that deserves a first-class experience on Sodor, and I am a first-class engine. Don't you dare think about stealing the Admiral away from Dustin, said James. You stick to your work and let Dustin do his. Oh, steal him away? Never. I wouldn't dream of it. But secretly, Spencer was scheming up a plan. The next day, he puffed into the yard. Where are my special coaches? Philip? Stafford? Stanley? Oh, where are those minions when you need one of them? What's going on? asked old slow coach. Maybe I could be of assistance. Spencer laughed. Oh, right. Like you'd be any help. No, thank you. I'll find them myself. If you're looking for your special coaches, they're not here today. Duck and Oliver took them to the Little Western. Spencer about burst a pipe. Why, those little... <sighs> never mind, never mind. Driver says it's not worth working up my steam. But I will make sure I get my coaches back. Old slow coach chuckled. If you need a special carriage for the day, I would be a nice substitute. Plus, we could work on your manners in the meantime. Spencer had no choice. Fine, I do need a special coach for a very important train today. And despite your name, you are one of the most luxurious coaches on the railway, so I guess you'll do. I guess you'll do. Do you hear him talking about you? I wouldn't let him anywhere near me. Relax, Henrietta. I think this will be a good opportunity for Spencer and I to get to know each other. And, like I said, we'll work on improving those manners between stops. Spencer groaned and was coupled up to old slow coach. They immediately set off towards Thomas's branch line. What are we doing all the way out here? Where's your special train? It's right here, actually. Oh, hello, Spencer. Nice to see you out here. The Admiral... Your Highness, gasped Spencer. It is an honor to meet you. Your Highness? What's all this about? Yes, hello there. Nice to meet you. Uh, the name is Spencer, sir. I have come with important news from Sir Topham Hatt. You are required at once at Topham Mansion. Oh, my. Sounds quite serious. 
We were going to check out Farquhar Sheds for any hidden secrets, but I suppose that can wait for another day. We'll just follow you. No, no, there's no need to stand in the cab of that filthy steaming thing. This coach right here is all yours, sir. Well, that's rather nice of you, Spencer. But Dustin is my- There's no time to lose. Sir Topham Hatt requires your presence immediately. The Admiral was surprised. Hmm, I guess I better not argue with the Fat Controller. Same time tomorrow, Dustin. We'll pick up right where we left off. But Old Slow Coach was not convinced. Since when are you a messenger for Sir Topham Hatt, Spencer? Is this what you needed me for? So that you could steal away Dustin's one job on the railway? Spencer smirked and puffed away. Old Slow Coach was feeling very betrayed. To think you convinced me I was needed for an important job. This isn't important at all, and you are a thief. Spencer showed the Admiral all around the railway, even though he had already seen most of it, courtesy of Dustin. This is nice and all, Spencer, but I do feel obliged to see Sir Topham Hatt as soon as possible. After all, that's why you came to get me, right? Yes, right, of course, sir. I just thought an occasional stop in the countryside would be nice, too. Well, I shouldn't complain. I've been at sea for so long that sights like these aren't very common. Old Slowcoach was furious. You took advantage of me, Spencer. I'm only supposed to be used for very important guests, not some sailor who you want to impress. You know you're going to get into trouble. Why waste your time with this charade? He's a very important man with very important connections, I presume. Maybe he knows somebody that can get me off this railway and away from annoying little things like you. At last, Spencer finally arrived at Topham Mansion that evening. Sir Topham Hatt, of course, was nowhere to be found. Oh, bother. It appears Sir Topham Hatt is not in right now. I bet if we travel more around the railway, we'll catch a glimpse of him somewhere. But the Admiral was not amused. I don't know what this is about, Spencer, but today has been an incredible waste of my time. I don't know Sir Topham Hatt that well, but I know he doesn't send personal engines to deliver vague messages to someone like me. I demand you take me back to Dustin at once. We have lots to work on. But, sir, I was only trying to show you how smoothly I run the rails. And the sights and sounds of Sodor and how much steam I produce, not to mention how glossy my paint is. Oh, give it up, shouted old slow coach, and return me back to the yard, please. I'm tired of being taken along for a ride. Spencer realized his plan had failed. He was not surprised to see Sir Topham Hatt when he got back. Spencer, you have a lot of explaining to do, but first... Old slow coach. I would expect this kind of behavior from Spencer, but not from a coach of your caliber. Engaging in nonsense like this is not like you at all. It wasn't my fault, sir, she protested. Spencer convinced me he had a special train to pull, and I volunteered. If I'd known he was going to steal the Admiral away, I would have never agreed. It's true, agreed the Admiral. Old Slowcoach here did not live up to her name. In fact, she was one of the most luxurious and quietest coaches I have ever ridden in. I never felt a single bump on the track, except when Spencer slammed on his brakes at every station. Spencer felt quite ashamed. Sir Topham Hatt was quick to apologize. That sounds more like you, my dear. I was going to say you'd taken on quite a new, bold lifestyle rather abruptly, but I should have known you would have never agreed to this. Thank you for keeping the Admiral company during today's events. 
I'll make sure your leather seats are restitched and the carpet is replaced before your next outing. Old Slowcoach was quite pleased. Spencer limped sadly away back to his shed. I'll deal with him in the morning. In the meantime, I do apologize for today's distraction. My engines understand your work is very important, and we will not trouble you any further. Actually, I will be needing some assistance in a few days. I believe that Sailor John could be hiding up in the hills where your little engines work. Would it be possible to borrow them for a day as I survey the area? Sir Topham half smiled. It would be an honor to show you the Scarlowy Railway, Admiral. And the engines will love to see you too. I'm sure I can arrange something. The Admiral turned to Old Slowcoach. It appears our brief journey ends here. Thank you for a lovely ride today. And if Sir Topham Hatt doesn't keep his promise about the new carpet, come find me. Old Slowcoach was very happy. That's enough disorder for one day. I think I'll be sticking to my sightings for the foreseeable future. The bold lifestyle is not for a coach like me, that's for sure. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 245, Hard to Handle. One morning, Dustin puffed into the wharf where the Admiral would begin his journey around the Scarlowy Railway. I'll see you tonight, Dustin. With any luck, today will bring us one step closer to finding Sailor John. Ah, you must be, uh, Mr. Percival, is that correct? Sir Topham Hatt told me you would meet us here. Yes, welcome to the Scarlowy Railway, Admiral. I can't wait for you to see our little part of the island. The Admiral looked around. Is... is there going to be an engine to take me where I need to go? Yes, well, you see, the little engines have been hard at work all summer, and unfortunately, I don't have one to spare for your journey, yet. However, your work is very important, so I will pull over the next engine that puffs into the wharf and have him or her be your guide today. There isn't a bad engine on this railway, so I am confident you will receive the best tour ever. But Mr. Percival wasn't expecting the engine that showed up. It looks like it's going to be Sir Handel, he said flatly. Oh dear. What's so wrong with Sir Handel? asked Dustin. He's a friendly engine and he's worked here a long time. Yes, you're very right. But when Sir Handel's having a bad day, stow it, you trucks. I've had enough of your nonsense ever since we left the quarry. If you keep this up, I'll throw each of you off a cliff one by one. Mr. Percival grinned nervously. Ahem, Sir Handel, we have a guest on the railway today. This is the Admiral, and he's doing some work for Sir Topham Hat. I would like you to... Why is he wearing a funny hat? Does he know the oceans that way? Dustin chuckled quietly. The Admiral even managed to laugh. You're very correct, Sir Handel. I do look out of place in the rocky hills of your railway. Would you like to give me a tour so I can acquaint myself with this part of the island? But Sir Handel wasn't interested. No thanks. These trucks deserve to be punished. And once I drop this load off... Ahem, Sir Handel, the Admiral needs a ride, and you're the only engine available. I'm sure whatever you're going to dish out on these trucks can wait until you get back. Sir Handel sighed loudly. Fine, I guess I'll do it, but let's make this quick. Peter Sam keeps stealing my favorite spot in the shed, and I won't sleep outside again. Mr. Percival was quite embarrassed. I hope you'll forgive me for Sir Handel's uh, brashness. It seems we caught him on an off day, but I am confident his attitude will improve throughout your journey, or he'll be getting a stern talking to when he returns. Sir Handel gulped and smiled. Of course, he said enthusiastically. Let's go see what the narrow gauge line has to offer. 
the Admiral stepped aboard and Sir Handel was off. Take me high up into the hills, please. Any place where you might think an outlaw would set up camp. Sir Handel was becoming more interested. Sounds very serious, he said, but I am just the engine for the job. They passed a magnificent waterfall before stopping at an old cottage where the terrain became rocky. Stop here. I want to inspect this house. Trust me, nobody's lived here for years. That old thing is one gust of wind away from falling over. The Admiral surveyed the residence. Now this, this would make for a perfect home. What? For you? I thought we were catching bad guys, not looking at houses. Relax, I'll need a place to conduct my research, and this shack might just do the trick. Too bad it's far away from the standard gauge line. I'll need a vehicle or something to get to Dustin every morning. Just then, Scarloe came puffing down the line with a train of quarry cars. Sir Handel moved into a siding to get out of the way. Does this line actually go anywhere? quizzed the Admiral. It stops up ahead at Boulder Mountain, but it's a one-way track to get there. We do a lot of mining and drilling in this area. It's very dangerous work. I would think so. Come on, let's take a look. Sir Handel wasn't so convinced, but the two chugged on. Soon enough, they had arrived at Boulder Mountain. I don't see any treasure chests or maps with giant X's on them, teased Sir Handel. I don't think you'll find your pirate friend here. No, this would be a very unconventional place for Sailor John to live. But as a place to plunder... Just then, two cargo trucks honked at each other. Ugh, I despise that noise, groaned Rusty. Those lorries are obnoxiously loud. This used to be a quiet, relaxing place to get away from it all. Now these big trucks have moved in and ruined everything. Interesting. I wouldn't expect to see so many vehicles up in the mountains. The road to get here can't be an easy climb. No, it's not. And it's very treacherous. But lately, we've had a lot more trucks up here in these areas. I guess they think it's worth the risk. What risk? asked the Admiral. Rusty looked around. Well, we're trying to keep the news quiet, but... Thumper and his drilling crew have found several deposits of... valuables in the area. Word has inevitably gotten out, but we're still doing our best not to let everybody know. The Admiral gasped. My goodness, this is the exact thing that would attract Sailor John. He couldn't resist gold and silver if he knew where it was. But it's very exciting times for us, added Butch. These discoveries will likely be very profitable for the railway. I'm sure of it. Well, this has been an excellent day. I'm positive Sailor John isn't currently in this area but I wouldn't be surprised if he starts sneaking around in the future, especially with the discovery of precious metals. Come on, Sir Handel, let's get out of here before... Just then, there was a startling smash as one of the trucks tipped over. For just a moment, the Admiral caught a glimpse of a man with a purple jacket and white hat. Follow that lorry, he cried. What's going on? asked Sir Handel. Never mind that. After him. The truck raced away on the railway track and Sir Handel quickly followed. Unfortunately, when they cleared the tunnel down the line, Scarloe was in the way and the lorry climbed back onto the rails and was soon out of sight. Drat, we just missed him. He knows I'm here. He's scared of me now, I imagine. Do, do you think that was Sailor John? asked Sir Handel. Without a doubt. Here I was, thinking he hadn't made it to this part of the island yet, but he's likely already surveyed the hills, just like I was doing. That pirate is a crafty one, for sure. That evening, Sir Handel and the Admiral met Mr. Percival at Croven's Gate. The Admiral explained what he had seen earlier that day. 
Well, that is some big news, and I'm very glad you discovered what you were looking for. But unfortunately, we can't close the entire quarry to keep Sailor John away. There's too much business to be done there. Yes, I understand that, but you must control who has access to the Boulder Mountain area. I would recommend getting all of those lorries out of there and only move essential goods on the railway tracks. You can say it's a safety procedure or something like that. If you get rid of the road access, then Sailor John will have to find another way to infiltrate the quarry. Or, hopefully, he'll give up and move on to something else. Yes, I see. I will have to talk to Sir Topham Hatt about all this, but I do believe that is a good idea. There has been quite a boom in activity in that area recently, and we must get it under control. Speaking of things being under control, I hope Sir Handel wasn't too fussy today. Are you kidding? That was the most excitement I've had in years. It sure beats pulling old trucks around all day. Yes, Sir Handel was a welcome companion and an excellent tour guide. I couldn't believe his speed. When we chased after Sailor John, his large wheels gripped magnificently along the rails as we... Mr. Percival laughed. Oh dear, I wouldn't have mentioned his wheels if I were you. But it was too late. My what? My large wheels? What are you trying to suggest? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I was only saying, are you saying I look like a steamroller or something? Now you've done it, chuckled Dustin. Let's go home before this gets any worse. The Admiral was confused. I was only complimenting him, he muttered. Meanwhile, Sir Handel was seething. Easy now. You did a good deed today, and it's time for a rest. I'm sure your friends will love to hear stories about your adventure. Oh, they'll be hearing something, all right. That admiral thinks he can walk onto my railway and insult me? Those engines will never hear the end of it. And Sir Handel puffed quickly away, back to his grouchy behavior as usual. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 246, Sydney Transplant. The admiral had had a busy few days on the island of Sodor. There's no denying it. Sailor John is on the railway, and it is my promised duty to stop him once and for all. Dustin and I have a lot of catching up to do today. But first... Ah, Mighty Mac. Mind if I catch a ride this morning? At the wharf, the Admiral waited and waited for Dustin to show up, but he never did. Eventually, a blue diesel stumbled in. Oh, hello there. I think I know who you are. You're the commander, aren't you? Yes, close enough. I don't believe we've met before. What's your name? The engine closed his eyes and his face scrunched into a determined look. Then, suddenly... Sydney, sir! The admiral was surprised. Oh, quite right. Well done, I suppose. And how may I assist you, Sidney? I'm actually here because Dustin is ill, and he won't be able to make it today. I thought I could be your private engine instead. Well, I suppose that will work. You seem like a decent enough fellow. And I presume you have a working knowledge of the island and its many locations? Affirmative, Captain. I made it here from the diesel works with only two wrong turns. A personal best. Right then, this might work. Let's go, Sydney. We have a lot to see today. Sydney was very excited with his new job and quickly cruised away. He eventually stopped at Vickerstown Station so that the Admiral could grab something to eat. Was that... The Admiral? gasped Henry. What are you doing with him, Sidney? I'm his private engine for the day. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be off. And Sydney bizarrely rolled away. The engines were quite confused. If he's the Admiral's private engine for the day, then why did he just leave? I'm all for letting Sydney get out there and try new things, but this is just embarrassing. You're right. We have to do something, otherwise the Admiral will think that all of us engines on Sodor are just like him. Sydney, meanwhile, had completely forgotten about his promise to the Admiral and had made his way to the sawmill. What are you doing here, Sydney? Please be careful. This can be a dangerous place if you're not paying attention. Okie dokie, Wilbert. Let me just move out of the way. All right, everyone. Let's be careful while Sydney's here. You know how he can get when he's in an unfamiliar place. <laughs> like this one time, he... Uh, what's Sydney doing up there? Asked Hank. Wilbert gasped. Sydney had somehow made his way up to the dumping depot. Is this a safe place to rest? He called. No, Sydney. Don't sit there too long or else... Suddenly, the track tipped Sydney sideways and shook him violently. What's going on? Why doesn't it like me? It thinks you're a log car, shouted Murdoch. Maybe it will stop if you try, I don't know, acting more like a log car, I guess. Sydney was jostled and rattled every which way until he finally came to a stop. Wow, that was wild, exclaimed Neville. You feeling all right? Perfectly fine. Why do you ask? Neville was surprised. Oh, you know, just making sure you're okay. Sydney looked around. Goodness me, who has the time? Has anyone got the time? I believe I am running tardy for my appointment with the Admiral. I shall make haste at once. And Sydney was off. The engines were confused. Did you see that? cried Hank. That dumb diesel was talking all smart and everything. Back at Vickerstown, the Admiral had returned and was waiting by the platform. Have any of you seen Sydney recently? I thought he was going to wait here while I was away, but apparently he's... Just then, Sydney raced into a stop. So sorry, Admiral. A thousand apologies for my unpunctual behavior. I will do my best to serve you better this afternoon. The Admiral was surprised. Oh, really? It's perfectly all right, Sydney. Let's get going then. Sydney departed and the rest of the engines couldn't believe what they had seen. I didn't know Sydney knew that many words, exclaimed Rosie. And the fact that he put him together in a sentence like that, there may be hope for all of us. The rest of the day went by perfectly as Sidney took the Admiral wherever he wanted to go. They stopped for a break at Wellsworth where Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Mr. Admiral, I hope your journey today hasn't been too uh, disappointing. I had no idea Sidney was going to step in place of Dustin. We usually have him do other tasks on the railway, and giving tours is not one of them. But the Admiral was impressed. Well, maybe you should let him do them more often. Sidney has been a wonderful companion today. He knows so much more about Sodor that I gave him credit. He was just explaining how the Wellsworth scrapyard is technically not in Wellsworth. Who knew he was such a historian? Sir Topham Hatt was surprised. Well, that is certainly not the Sydney that I am used to, but if the tour is going well, then I can't complain. Carry on then, I suppose. Sydney was about to pull away when the Admiral noticed a lone track that split off from the main line towards the trees. I don't think I've been down this track before. Looks like it hasn't been used in quite some time. Do you know anything about this, Sydney? I'm afraid not, Admiral. My knowledge of Sodor and its pre-existing railways only goes so far. Yes, fair enough. 
Well, I would like to take a look at this line sometime in the future, but I believe that will be a job for Dustin, since his snowplow can cut through the brush and dismantle that sign with ease. Just then, the signal in blue is whistle loudly. We've got a runaway train coming down the line right now! Clear the tracks immediately! Oh dear, that probably means us. Let's get out of here, Sydney. But it was too late. The train came rushing through the station and the Admiral jumped clear just in time. Sydney was pushed into the back of the sheds in a massive wreck. Cinders and crashes, cried Edward. Can't an old engine like myself get any sleep around here? Fortunately, no one was hurt and the train was removed from the sheds. However, things weren't quite the same for poor old Sydney. Who are you? Where am I? This isn't the diesel works. Am I supposed to be shunting these trucks? Well, I guess I better get on it. No, wait, Sydney, you're my private engine, remember? Sydney, Sydney, stop at once. Reg chuckled. Now that's the Sydney we all know. He must have taken a bonk on the head when he hit the shed wall, and now he's back to himself. The Admiral was very confused. Looks like I'll be returning home on foot this evening, he muttered to himself. And the Admiral walked away, proving that some days on Sodor are definitely better than others. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 247, Wells Worth the Wait. A few days later, it was time for Dustin and the Admiral to explore the abandoned track near Wellsworth Station. Glad you're feeling better, Dustin. Here's the line I was talking about earlier. It seems so inconspicuous, and yet it beckons to be explored. We must take a closer look. Do you think Sailor John might be hiding out there? Potentially, but even if he's not, think of all the discoveries that could lie beyond this sign. I couldn't call myself an explorer if I didn't venture within. Just then, Gordon puffed up. Of course, another red signal. Just my luck. This train will reach Vickerstown, oh, probably by the end of the week, if I'm lucky. You can't go anywhere on this island anymore. Dustin and the Admiral looked innocently at the big engine. What? Are you two the reason I'm being stopped here? What's going on? Sorry, Gordon, but we have to take a look at this abandoned sighting. I was going to let Dustin do the honors and chop the sign to bits, but Sir Topham Hatt prefers a more dignified disassembly. The pack is on the way right now, he added. We'll be out of your way soon. Gordon let off steam loudly. I guess I better get comfortable if it's going to be a while. The express being upstaged by a snow shovel and a man with a funny hat. I've seen it all now. A few minutes later, Kelly, Jack, and Alfie arrived and quickly dismantled the sign. Sir Topham Hatt will be along shortly to see what you found, they said. Then we must get cracking. Onwards, Dustin. Let's cut through these brambles and see what lies on the other side. Just then, a Crosby Station cargo truck roared in and honked loudly. Its engine revved over and over. What's his problem? Does he want to race? No, that's Sailor John, exclaimed the Admiral. He's driving the same truck I saw up at the quarry. Never mind all this. After him, Dustin. And the truck raced away with Dustin right behind it. Gordon took a deep breath and sighed. Well, at least they're gone now. Maybe I can finally get my express moving. But the signal was still red. Gordon wouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon. Well, this is awkward, muttered Alfie. We just took the sign down and now the Admiral and Dustin aren't here to explore. 
Maybe one of us could see what's over there, asked Kelly. No, no, it must be me, insisted Gordon. Why you, protested Jack. Because I am the most senior member of Sir Topham Hatt's railway in attendance, and it would be a pity if one of you messed up something on the other side. I'll take full responsibility for what I find. Jack stared crossly as Gordon was uncoupled from his train. Sure, go ahead and leave your waiting passengers at the platform. This will only take a minute, he grumbled. There can't possibly be anything terribly surprising over there. Gordon inched slowly down the track and worked his way up a small hill, where he puffed into a mysterious cave. Never mind what I said, this is very interesting. I wonder why the line was blocked off in the first place. Just then, Gordon stopped. He peered over the edge of the track and saw three familiar, horrid lorries parked below. Cinders and ashes! Those pesky lorries! Why, I should go down there and deal with them myself! When do you think Sailor John will be back? asked Lorry One. Probably not for a while. He mentioned that the engines were snooping around the entrance to the mine earlier, and that he might run out and do a diversion or something. That's precisely what he did, whispered Gordon. Just as Dustin was about to head down the line, the cargo truck appeared and drew him away. I guess he didn't think about a big blue engine like myself taking a look instead. Listen, guys, now that Sailor John's not here, I'm not so sure about this renewed partnership we have with him. Ugh, not this again. We've been over this. Sailor John is our best bet in order to get these steam engines off the rails and into the scrapyard so that we can take over the island. Yes, but remember how he treated us? He left us to clean up his mess last time. He was going to abandon us and take the treasure away. Surely he'll do the same thing this time. Remember, it's not about the treasure. It's about revenge. We lorries have sat silent for too long. We do the dirty work and the engines get the praise and recognition. I don't care if Sailor John finds any treasure or not. He wants to take down the railway, and that is a plan all of us can get behind. Lori, too, was still uncertain. Again, I don't have a good feeling about this. Gordon was shocked. Not only are the horrid Lorries back on Sodor, but they're also scheming with Sailor John again. This is worse than I could have imagined. I must go tell Sir Topham Hatt right away. Gordon tried to reverse, but he bumped into something behind him. What is that? he wondered. Caught peeking at me lorries, have ya? You won't be getting out of this one, Gordon. Let me show ya what I'm gonna do to all of the engines on the Sodor Railway. Meanwhile, Jack and his friends were still waiting outside the mine when Sir Topham had arrived. Are Dustin and the Admiral inside already? What's happening? Have we heard anything about their progress? Well, no, not really. You see, the Admiral and Dustin went chasing after one of those Crosby Station cargo trucks, and so there was nobody left to go inside. Which meant Gordon, of course, had to volunteer himself. Wait, Gordon went down the track? What is he thinking? He has an express to pull right now. We tried to tell him, sir, but he wouldn't listen. Bother, this is no time to be sightseeing, Gordon. Come out at once. Look, the signal is green and your passengers are waiting. But there was no reply. Sir Topham Hatt was growing impatient. Fine, I'll venture inside myself. It can't be that scary. Just then, Dustin and the Admiral raced in. Where's Sailor John? asked Alfie. Ah, we lost him, grumbled Dustin. He kept veering away from the track and I couldn't keep up. I think you'll need an off-road vehicle for your next chase, Admiral. We'll see about that later. 
Ah, Sir Topham Hatt, so nice of you to join us. We're about to be the first crew to explore the line in as many years. Just then, the Admiral noticed the express coaches. We're not going to be the first crew to explore the line in as many years, are we? No, and Gordon's not obeying my command to come out here at once. Dear me, these engines nowadays. Let us take a look, sir. We don't know what we're going to find on the other side, but Dustin and I are equipped to handle any surprises. Very well, but please make it quick. We must get this express moving so that the passengers aren't waiting here at Wellsworth any longer. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt and the Admiral heard a loud wishing noise, followed by... Oh, get off of me, you dirty pirate! You won't be sending me to the scrapyard! Gordon! Easy now, Gordon! What happened? What did you see? Oh, you wouldn't believe it, sir. The, the lorries, they were... And then Sailor John, big truck, couldn't move. But I showed him I got away before he was able to lay a finger on me. Whoa, you said you saw Sailor John inside? Did you speak to him? He threatened me is what he did. I heard the lorries talking about a plan, and then he showed up out of nowhere and said he was going to make an example of me. Oh, it was terrible, sir. We must close off this line and keep Sailor John where he is, said the Admiral. This is our chance to end this once and for all. Um, excuse me, said the passengers. We're wondering if someone is going to pull our train today. We're very, 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 very... Oh, of course. Never mind the fact that I was nearly cut up a few minutes ago. Let me pull your train so that you can get on your merry way. And with that, Gordon rushed out of the station, with the passengers barely making it aboard in time. What a rush, gasped Kelly. What a mess, muttered Sir Topham Hatt. We must end this at once. Dustin and the Admiral raced into the mine and quickly discovered the horrid lorries. Sailor John, however, was nowhere to be found. The lorries aren't going anywhere. They're out of fuel, it seems. But Sailor John has somehow escaped. I don't know how he did it, but he's not in there. Can't find his truck, either. Well, let's be thankful no one got hurt and called this a win for today. Jack, get your crew to haul those lorries out of there right now. I need to talk to them immediately. Dustin, I want you to guard this line and make sure nobody passes you. And Admiral, I think it's time we got you a new vehicle. Dustin has served you well, but if Sailor John insists on taking this battle to the roads, then we must do the same. This small victory has been well worth the wait. Well done, everybody. Let's savor it while we can, while preparing for more action tomorrow. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 248, Big Trouble on the Little Western. Gordon's close call with Sailor John spread rapidly around the railway. What was it like? asked Paxton, standing face to face with one of the worst lawbreakers the island has ever seen. It was nothing, chuckled Gordon. I stared him down and he was definitely frightened of me, but I wasn't frightened of him. I stood my ground and raced out of there as fast as I could. Oh, so you ran away from him, teased James. Now listen, there was a lot going on, and I knew I was already late for a train, so I had to get back to my coaches. Duck rolled his eyes. Sure thing, Gordon. Come on, Oliver. It's time we headed to work. And unlike the Express, the Little Western doesn't abandon its passengers at a station in the middle of the day. The engines chuckled as they puffed away. In all seriousness, though, Oliver, we must keep a watchful eye. 
Tidmouth isn't too far away from Wellsworth, where everything happened. And Sailor John is still on the run, even though Gordon insists he had him cornered. You can't trust a word Gordon says nowadays, chuckled Oliver. I'd be surprised if he saw Sailor John at all. Just then, Sir Topham Hat walked up. Ah, good to see you both, Duck and Oliver. The Admiral will be along shortly. He's picking up his new vehicle today, and I want to make sure everything goes over well. The engines weren't surprised when Butch arrived with Ace in tow. So he's getting a second, second chance, laughed Oliver. Well, the Admiral will need something fast to keep up with Sailor John, and what better vehicle than a race car like Ace? He's had some <clears throat> behavioral issues in the past, but I believe we've rectified those as of now. Ace grinned sheepishly. Soon the Admiral arrived. Thank you for the ride, Dustin. I'll be seeing you about, I'm sure. It was quite the journey to explore Sodor with you. Likewise, sir, you know where to find me. And Dustin puffed away. The Admiral turned his attention to Sir Topham Hatt. I've been thinking, sir, about how Sailor John must have escaped from the mine the other day. I bet he slipped out while nobody was watching and climbed aboard Gordon's train since it was sitting there. Sir Topham Hatt was surprised. Do you really think he could have blended in with the passengers? He's a master at a lot of things, not just pirate-related endeavors. Plus, as far as I'm aware, the people of Sodor do not know what is going on with Sailor John. You're absolutely right, and I intend to keep it that way. There is no need to scare the passengers. We must keep the trains running so that they do not suspect a thing. Just then, a Crosby Station cargo truck pulled in. That has to be Sailor John, right? asked Duck. What's he doing out and about in the daylight right now? No, that's not Sailor John's truck, but there are a lot of Crosby Station cargo trucks in the fleet, but Sailor John's is a little bit more beat up than that. Still, it does make for a lot of confusion, understandably. Sir Topham Hatt thought for a moment. Maybe it is time for me to pull the remaining trucks off the road until we get this solved. But who will handle the deliveries? asked Oliver. Those trucks carry a lot of supplies around the island. Well, I do have three horrid lorries that have been impounded at Wellsworth Station that are eager to become really useful again. Perhaps they would be willing to help out in a situation like this. But what makes you think you can trust them again? Didn't you say they had previously helped Sailor John in the past? Yes, but I've talked to them and they seem quite remorseful for what they've done. They said the only reason they were around Sailor John this time is because they ran out of fuel under a bridge and he moved them to the mine with the promise of fixing them up. Apparently, that never happened. So the lorries are very bitter about the situation. But I do believe they will be very helpful in our fight against Sailor John. Well, do what you must do, Sir Topham Hatt. In the meantime, I'm going to get acquainted with my new vehicle here. He sure looks fast. Duck chuckled and set off with his passengers. This Sailor John business is awfully distracting for the railway. I wish it would come to an end. Further down the line, Duck was forced to stop by the Sodor sweet shop. Oh, bother. One of those pesky cargo trucks they were just talking about. I can't tell if this one is Sailor John's or not. Duck's driver and fireman got out to look at the vehicle. Just then, one of the doors on Duck's coach opened. Uh, please stay inside the coach until we reach the station, thank you. It's dangerous to walk around. Don't say a word, whispered Sailor John. Let's go. Duck's driver and fireman were amazed when he suddenly took off without them. 
Did you leave the lever on? Me? I'm the fireman. I don't know how any of that works. But Dennis had been sitting nearby and had seen everything. Word soon spread quickly around the railway. Duck's been hijacked, gasped Henry. Sailor John apparently stole the controls away from his driver and fireman. All of the engines were very concerned, except James. That pirate nearly blew me up last time, and nobody batted an eye. What gives? Eventually, Sailor John was forced to stop near the docks. Sir Topham Hatt and the Admiral had blocked the track. Give it up, Sailor John. We know you're in there. It's time you ceased all of this nonsense and left the island before something bad happens. Here's your opportunity to get on that tugboat and never return. Har! Me? Leave? You sure don't know a pirate, do ya? We never give up and we never surrender. This engine sure isn't as exciting as I thought he'd be. He's a little lame, if I'm being honest. Take him instead and stow it. Har ha ha har! And Sailor John flipped the lever before running away into a field. The Admiral immediately hopped into Ace and drove him onto the track where Duck harmlessly came to a stop. Phew, that was a close one. Although it looks like we won't get a shot at capturing Sailor John today, at least we have our engine back. That could have been much worse. But Duck was feeling sad. Lame, he muttered. He called me a lame duck. How rude. Ace, on the other hand, had been involved in yet another accident, and the Admiral could barely get out of the car to assess the damage. Well, sir, I appear to have ruined my new ride for the moment. I hope you'll forgive my mishap. I figure this was better than having Duck run around the railway with no one at the controls. Ace was very brave to let me do what needed to be done. You're absolutely correct, and thank you for your sacrifice, Ace. We'll get you fixed up as soon as we can. The Admiral will need you like never before if he's going to take down Sailor John. Duck breathed a sigh of relief. I don't like being taken for a ride, he said especially with that greasy pirate at the controls. Sir Topham Hatt wiped his brow. The last thing the little western needs is a hijacked duck. Glad you're safe and sound. But you were right, Admiral. Sailor John's lawlessness knows no bounds. He stole one of my engines in broad daylight and has likely been disguising himself amongst the passengers. We must bring him down sooner rather than later, and if we intend to do that, we must employ the help of all of the engines on the railway. They see far more of it every day than just the two of us, and hopefully their tips will bring this clash to an end. Right, sir. I will get Ace fixed up and will set out first thing tomorrow morning. I've done enough exploring and clue gathering. Now it's time to put that pirate away before it's too late. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 249, Oliver Confusion. The Admiral laid down strict orders for Sir Topham Hatt's engines. Sailor John is a menace and must be contained at once. I will be patrolling the island from now on, and will do my best to locate him. But if any of you spot him, please notify me immediately. Also, we must investigate the cave where Sailor John was hiding the horrid lorries for any clues. There has to be a reason why he was in that area, and it's our job to find that out. Uh, let's see, Oliver? Please dig up what you can, and let's get this investigation back on track. Yes, sir, they both said, unaware of what the other was doing. Hey, Thumper, I've got some great news. The Admiral wants me to search the area where Sailor John was hiding out. 
I could use some help digging up anything he left behind. Want to help? Absolutely. That sounds like a banging good time. I'll meet you there tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, on the other side of the island, Ryan, there you are. Listen, the Admiral has put me in charge of cleaning up Sailor John's mess near Wellsworth, and I'm looking for some help. Would you be interested? Sure I am. Once I'm done helping Percy with the mail tomorrow, I'll make my way over. The next day, the inevitable happened. Step aside, Dustin. I'm here on special orders from the Admiral. Oh, really? That's interesting, because so is Oliver here. Looks like you two will be working together. Oh, I see. I think you're mistaken, Oliver. The Admiral clearly wanted me to come and take a look inside the cave. Nonsense. He was talking to me. Didn't you hear him? I'm supposed to get the investigation back on track. And I'm supposed to dig up any clues I find. Dustin looked around awkwardly. I'll let you two figure this out. Just then, Ryan and Thumper arrived. Ah, my help is here. Good to see you, Ryan. No, that's my help. Thumper's here to help with the drilling. And the two continued to bicker nonstop. Ryan and Thumper weren't feeling very welcome. I have other stuff I could be doing at Boulder Mountain. Take me back there. Same. I don't have time to stand here and fight. Soon, everyone's help was gone, and it was just Oliver and Oliver. Well, now we're going to have to team up, considering it's just the two of us. I'll go first. No, you won't. You're so slow. I'll be waiting here all day for you to get up that hill. Let me go first, and I'll see what's inside. And what are you going to do when you find something? You'll need my excavator to get it out for you. And my cargo cars will haul everything away. Defiantly, Oliver rushed onto the track and proceeded to move very slowly down the line. This is ridiculous. I hope you're happy. Meanwhile, inside the mine, there was Sailor John, hard at work. First time I've been back here since the diversion. Eh, looks like they took those lorries away. No harm, really. They were annoying and loud. I'll manage just fine with my own lorry here. And this one doesn't talk back. <laughs> I'm guessing I can't stay here any longer. It's only a matter of time before Sir Totten Hat sends someone down this line to plunder me plunder. Time to pack up and leave before that happens. Just then, there was a loud creaking noise as Oliver's arm poked through the water. Arr, looks like I'm too late. Best I get out of here before I'm spotted. I never even got the chance to scour the area for treasure. Gah, I hope there's nothing in these walls that I regret not finding. And Sailor John hopped in his truck and quickly sped away, just as Oliver emerged from the mine. There, finally, I told you I didn't need any help. Yes, you do. You're as slow as the caterpillars you run on. The two were still not very happy with one another. Well, what are you waiting for? Start digging. After all, the Admiral did assign you to this job. You know I can't dig, and you also know you'll need my cargo cars to take away whatever you find. Let's stop arguing and actually work together, shall we? Maybe we were both meant for the job after all. Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry for being so rude. I was excited to finally do something special like this. Me too. Usually Duck gets asked to do all of the cool tasks on the Little Western, so I was a little overprotective of my job. The two finally smiled and set to work. Oliver quickly tore into the cave walls while Oliver stood by with his cargo cars, ready to remove the rubble. Meanwhile, the Admiral and Ace had been up and down the island all day with no luck. If I didn't know any better, I'd assume Sailor John has vanished into thin air, sir. 
I can't find a single trace of them, and I only hope that Oliver has found something useful at the mine today. No news from any of the engines, either. We may have to wait until Sailor John decides to reveal himself again. There's only so much looking we can do. It had been a disappointing day on the outside, but inside the mine, the two Olivers were making good progress. There has to be something in these walls. I just know it. Keep digging, Oliver. It's almost time for us to be done for the day. Just then, Oliver's excavator hit something loud. A sharp echo rang throughout the cave. That wasn't a rock. That was something much more interesting. Let me see what it is. Oliver dug a little bit more until... Is that what I believe it is? I think so. Sir Topham Hatt and the Admiral will be thrilled to see this. Back at Tidmouth Sheds, it had been an exhausting day. The engines were very worn out. I tried to look for Sailor John on my mail route today, but I kept missing the platforms at the stations. Maybe it's better if I only focus on one thing at a time. And the quarry was clear too, added Timothy. We checked up and down the line all day. Just then, the engines heard a whistle. It was Oliver and Oliver, and they had something special to show off. Look what we found, sir! Can you believe it? Sir Topham Hatt and the Admiral eyed the curio suspiciously. That's not the treasure, is it? Well, no, we didn't find the big treasure or anything like that, but we found a trophy instead. That's pretty cool, right? Sir Topham Hatt was originally disappointed, but he gradually smiled. Yes, I suppose it is. Sometimes, when you have your eyes set on the biggest prize of all, it's easy to miss the smaller ones as they pass you by. Well done, Team Oliver. You deserve three cheers for a discovery like this. Indeed, the museum will be very pleased to add this to their collection. It's not every day you find a prize like this, and in such good condition, too. We must return to that cave and see what other discoveries lie within. All in a day's work, Admiral. I'll put more of my engines and excavators on the site, and we'll see what else Sailor John missed out on. Speaking of the disgraced pirate, Sailor John had fled down the line in disgust. I can't believe I was so foolish to give up me headquarters like that. All that time I spent searching the island and pinpointing that special cave, all wasted. Looks like I'll be on the move again. I'm thinking this overturned boat will provide some shelter for the evening. Sailor John tipped it over and his jaw dropped. Well, shiver me timbers. It was right in front of me eyes the entire time. Guess I'll be making haste for the mainland as soon as the wind changes. Har har har! Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 250, Diesel Gets the Bronze. While the entire island of Sodor was busy looking for Sailor John, there was one engine in particular that refused to show a wheel. This pirate nonsense is just that. Nonsense. You're wasting your time with this Sailor John fellow. He's smarter than all of you steam engines put together. He outsmarted you once, and he'll do it again. Rubbish, grunted Toby. Keep your bad opinions and oily fumes to yourself. We don't need that kind of talk around here. Diesel chuckled. You're only angry because I'm right. Personally, I'd be more worried about other pressing issues. Like what? grunted Spencer. Oh, haven't you heard? Diesels are taking over the mainland in droves. It will only be a matter of time before the same happens here. You're lying. Sir Topham Hatt would never let that happen. 
He only keeps you around for variety's sake. Fine, don't believe me. But when you find yourself in a rusty siding next to your friends, don't be surprised when I visit and say, I told you so. The engines wheesh loudly as Diesel slithered away. Don't take him seriously, muttered Sam. He only wants to stir up trouble, and that's exactly what'll happen if we listen to his lies. Diesel, meanwhile, was perfectly content to go around the railway and spread bad gossip. Have you heard about Gordon? Poor fellow, really. He slid off the edge of the track over there, and now he's sitting at the bottom of Brendam Harbor. Hey, that was our idea first. Yeah, we should get credit for that. Diesel rolled his eyes. Right, I forgot how stupid you two are. Never mind then. Diesel was excellent at knowing where to be at any given moment to maximize his damage to the railway. What are you doing up here, Diesel? This is the main line. You can't sit here and bask in the sun all day. Oh, I can't? Must have been a rule change I didn't hear about. Ahem, came a voice. Sir, sir, Topham Hat. Oh, I didn't see you there. You can't see anything when you're dozing with your eyes closed, Diesel. I want you off the main line right now. There are a lot of things that need my attention on this railway, and pestering you is not one of them. Go sunbathe somewhere else. Diesel snickered quietly. An order from Sir Topham Hat to go sit somewhere else? Don't mind if I do. That was all that Diesel needed. He became particularly useless over the next few days. You know, sitting in the sun like that for hours on end is really bad for your pain. You'll end up fading and all of your color will be gone. Diesel chuckled. I haven't had a repaint in years, and I certainly won't go get another one just because you recommended it. Rosie rolled her eyes. I was only trying to be helpful, she muttered. Diesel smiled and soaked up the sun. The light beat all over his body, and he sizzled happily in the baking heat. Even Ari and Bert were jealous. Some days, I think I'm particularly lazy, but then I take a look at Diesel, and I think, nah, I did some honest work. What was that? Nothing, Diesel, nothing. Keep sunning away over there. But Diesel's laziness soon caught up with him. Day after day, week after week, he refused to move from his spot. At last, one morning, he decided to stretch his wheels. Ah, I think I've got cobwebs stuck on my side rods. Maybe it's time to move just for a little bit. Whoa, Diesel, I don't think I've ever seen you in a color other than black. This new look is a bit dull, but I'm sure we'll get used to it. What are you mumbling about? He groaned. Just then, Diesel gasped. He looked all over his body and realized he had faded in the sunlight, just like Rosie predicted. Told you so, she chuckled. Diesel was appalled. I look terrible. Oh, I must get myself to the painters as quickly as possible. They'll fix this for me. But Diesel didn't know exactly where to go. The steam engines always brag about Victor doing a good job. Maybe he'll be able to help me. But Victor could only laugh when he saw Diesel. Sorry, my friend, but you're at the wrong repair yard. We don't service Diesels here. I'm sure Den and Dart have some black paint that they can spare. But Diesel was out of luck when he rolled into the Diesel Works. Hey, Diesel, we haven't seen you in a while. Oh, goodness gracious, you're on the verge of becoming a ghost, methinks. The engines laughed, but Diesel was not amused. 
I stayed out in the sun too long, and now my paint has faded. Will one of you please fix this? I look ridiculous. Den and Dart tried to get to work, but they couldn't help but chuckle at the situation. We can't see you all the way back there. Why don't you come a little closer? Uh, no thanks. I'll keep my distance. If they get a good look at me, I'll never hear the end of it. Just then, there was trouble. Oh, watch out! That lorry's backing up right into the foundry! Suddenly, the bucket of iron ore tipped and splashed all over Diesel. Oh, what was that? he cried. I can't see a thing! Keep your eyes closed, Diesel. You've had a very nasty accident. We'll try to clean you as best we can. But it was too late. The iron quickly solidified, and suddenly, Diesel was covered in a brand new color. Jokes aside, it fits you rather well. Better than that brown look you had earlier. When Diesel opened his eyes, he was very embarrassed. I can't go out looking like this. I'll be the laughing stock of the railway. I'll just wait here until it's dark, and then I'll go get a washdown. Just then, Sir Topham Hat pulled in. Well, Diesel, if that is you underneath that bronze masquerade, I've heard you've been doing much about nothing on my railway for the past few weeks, and I think it's time you pull the train to earn your keep again. Diesel gasped. No, sir, please, sir. I'll do anything not to be seen right now. Hmm, that's interesting. You were so focused on being seen that you sat in the sun where everyone could see you. And yet, now, you want to hide. I think you owe it to the rest of the railway to come out and show everyone your true colors. Diesel groaned, but he knew he had no choice. Reluctantly, he pulled into the station to take some trucks away. Well, 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 Diesel. You look like you came straight from a summer day at Norrenby Beach. Color me shocked, added Thomas. I think you've struck gold, or rather bronze, with that new look. Or maybe that's just rust all over you. Ha, ha, very funny. I'm leaving now so you can all stop gawking and go back to work. But secretly, Diesel was very embarrassed. He spent the entire night at the washdown and couldn't get the bronze color to come off no matter how many times he ran through. Eventually, he came to the sad realization that he would be looking tinted for the foreseeable future. Cheer up, said Gordon. You're a lazy engine, regardless of what color you're painted. But at least this makes you look like you have a personality. You should try one on for a change, and maybe you become a little less insufferable. And Gordon puffed away. Diesel didn't even bother thinking of a clever comeback. He had gotten what he had deserved, and more. That was for sure. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 251, James and the Giant Screech. After a few close calls with the Admiral and Sir Topham Hatt's engines, Sailor John was preparing to relocate the treasure. Driving me cargo truck across the bridge to the mainland won't be enough. There's engines everywhere looking for me loot and I'm a wanted outlaw the longer I stick around. I need to get me treasure off the island, and fast. Hmm, perhaps the best way to get this done is to let the engines do it for me. Yes, slipping me plunder into an unsuspecting freight car, and having an engine pull it to the mainland will solve this once and for all. They'll be too busy looking for me cargo truck that they won't have realized I've disappeared. Ho <laughs> ho ho, Sailor John, there are still a few bright ideas in that old brain of yours. Sailor John began to put his plan into motion. 
That night, he found some freight cars and hid the treasure underneath the tarp. Perfect. Based on the itinerary sheet over there, these cars are headed to the mainland tomorrow morning. I'll hop aboard a passenger train, and by midday, me precious treasure will be off of Sodor, and I can leave this horrid island behind. The engines will be none the wiser to me plan. <laughs> While Sailor John's scheme initially seemed foolproof, things started to go astray the next morning. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all. Right, Gordon, you've got the express as usual. Henry, you're taking some log cars to the sawmill. And James, I need you to double up and pull your passengers along with those freight cars. What? At the same time? Sir, I've never done anything like that before. You're a mixed traffic engine, so start acting like one, grunted Gordon. You always have something to complain about. You don't care because you're pulling the express. If Sir Topham Hatt made you pull coaches and trucks at the same time, you'd be having a fit right now. I'm sorry, James, but Edward is under the weather, and these trucks need to get to the mainland right away. Your passengers won't mind the extra weight. Yes, but my couplings will. <laughs> James is too weak, giggled Henry. You're the one to talk. Cheer up, said Elizabeth. Sir Topham Hat only gives extra work to engines that he can trust. Think of it as a compliment. But James wouldn't stop fuming. He angrily pushed the two trains together and seethed silently. Passengers and trucks at the same time. I look ridiculous. Meanwhile, Sailor John was standing near the back of the platform, ready to board James's coach. I will never live this down. Just because I can pull passengers and freight cars doesn't mean I should at the same time. Sir Topham Hatt was unimpressed. Just pull the train, James. At that moment, Sailor John stepped aboard and took a seat by the window. Ah, a perfect view of me precious treasure and the clear track ahead. It's smooth sailing from here on out. <laughs> Eventually, James was ready to leave. With a mighty pull, he puffed slowly out of the station. You'll have to go faster than that, James, laughed Gordon. Oh, that's it. Goodbye. And James surged ahead. Just as he hit some bumps in the track, suddenly the treasure flew out of the car and landed harmlessly on the ground. Ah, me treasure! Stop! Stop! And Sailor John pulled the emergency cord hard. Cinders and ashes! What was that? Could this day get any worse? Sailor John made a mad dash from the coach and quickly scooped up the treasure. By the time the smoke had cleared, he had vanished. Who was that? gasped James's driver. Ah, uh, probably some passenger who realized he was on the wrong train and wanted off. Let's get going, please. I look so silly stopped like this. Sorry, James, but we have to go back and ask the passengers what went on and file a report notify railway management, and start filling out the paperwork. James was incredibly embarrassed. He was stuck on the line for what seemed like hours and was eventually allowed to finish his route. He returned to the sheds that evening very upset. Seems like every engine was on time with their trains today, except for one. Oh, be quiet. I'd like to see you try pulling coaches and trucks at the same time. It's not as easy as it looks. Cheer up, James. It wasn't your fault that someone pulled the emergency cable. It's happened to all of us over the years. Yes, but it was right in front of the yard for everyone to see. And Gordon and Henry won't stop bringing it up. 
I think you should stick to trucks from now on. Clearly, you can't handle doing two things at once. The engines laughed, but James had had enough. That's it. I will not sit here and be insulted. I'm leaving. And James puffed angrily away. He was so caught up in the moment that he didn't realize that the crossing ahead was closed, and he smashed straight through the gates right into Ace. Oh, no, not another mistake. I'm so sorry, Ace. Eventually, the Admiral managed to free himself from the wreckage, but he was quite upset. I don't expect to be run over by rogue trains at railway crossings, James. This is a rather massive lapse in judgment. Sorry, sir. I haven't had the easiest day on the railway, and my feelings got the best of me. Sir Topham had eventually arrived on the scene. What a day you've had, James. I was getting ready to retire for the evening, but I guess there was one more crisis I have to deal with. Lady Hat is most upset. James was very embarrassed. The Admiral gazed sadly at his wrecked automobile. I'm pretty handy with some tools, but I can't fix that damage. Ace will need proper repairs this time around. There goes yet another one of my methods of transportation. Yes, this is most inconvenient. I will immediately begin storming up a replacement plan. In the meantime, I suppose you will have to have an engine to take you around the railway once again. The Admiral managed to smile. Well, Dustin and I did get along well last time, so it will be nice to reunite with him. Still, I can't compete with Sailor John if he insists on running around on the roads, but a private engine is better than nothing. At least I know Dustin won't impede my investigation, unlike some of the other engines on your railway. And the Admiral walked away. Can you believe him? gasped Elizabeth. Let me talk to him, sir. I'll give him a piece of my mind. Relax, Elizabeth. This whole situation has been rather tiring for all of us, including the Admiral and James here. Tension is high and morale is low. We must continue to persevere through these difficult times, or Sailor John is destined to win this fight. Speaking of which, the angry pirate was more upset than usual. Stupid bumpy tracks! The one time I depend on the engines to help me, and of course they end up ruining it. Looks like I'll be needing another way off this island. I wish I still had me tugboat. Even with a crack in the hull, maybe I could manage to float my way to the mainland. Just then, Sailor John looked at the overturned boat. Well, I was hoping for something a little more dignified but this dinghy will have to carry me away instead. It will be a painfully slow journey, but at least there won't be any engines or admirals out there in the ocean to stop me. As soon as the wind turns in me favor, I'll make sail right away before Sir Topham Hat has a chance to get his treasure back. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 252, Toby or Not Toby. The engines were very discouraged after their latest encounter with the Admiral. I heard it from Elizabeth. He said we're impeding his investigation of Sailor John. Can you believe it? Absolutely not, gasped Billy. Why, to say such a thing to us is downright unbelievable. I have never heard such malarkey in all my years. But first, quick question, what does impede mean anyway? The Admiral thinks we're getting in his way, groaned Molly, which is basically an excuse as to why he hasn't caught Sailor John yet, added Murdoch. Oh, sure, blame it on us, the ones he's been asking for help all this time. Settle down, everyone. 
Pitting ourselves against Sailor John and the Admiral will only lead to more trouble. This has been a frustrating situation for all of us. Well, he shouldn't say such horrible things to us. If he thinks we're getting in the way, then maybe it would be better if we didn't help at all. The engines wholeheartedly agreed. Toby was still unsure. The Admiral is a wise man who said something not so nice in the heat of the moment. This will all blow over soon enough. Just wait. But the engines were not impressed. Even Dustin was hesitant to return as the Admiral's private engine. What's the matter, my friend? Don't you want to continue our chase after Sailor John? It will be just like old times. Yes, right, if you say so. But don't complain when I can't take you off-road. Just then, the station master ran outside. Harold says he spotted Sailor John's truck on Thomas's branch line. Now's your chance, Admiral. Ah, perfect timing. Come on, Dustin. Let's put this pirate away once and for all. Meanwhile, Toby was on his way to pull a train when he began to lose steam. Slowly but surely, he came to a stop in the middle of the track. Bother, <laughs> broken down like an old outdated steam tram, he laughed. I suppose it is time I went in for repairs. My paint's been peeling and I'm pretty sure my floorboards are warping. If only I could get to that water tower over there. Just then, Toby heard a whistle and a truck zoomed around the corner. There, coming down the line straight for him, was Dustin. No, stop! I'm stuck on the track! But it was too late. Dustin crashed hard into Toby and flung him off the rails. Drat! We lost him again! Everybody okay? That was a mighty hit, Dustin. Who left this old van on the line? Guess we should tow the remains to the scrapyard. That's Toby, actually, said Dustin sheepishly. I'm guessing he ran out of water or something. The Admiral apologized profusely, but it didn't make Toby feel any better. Eventually, he was hauled back onto the track for Sir Topham Hatt to see. Dear me, the damage is quite extensive. It looks like Dustin's propeller acted as a wood chipper and chewed most of you up. I think you're very lucky to have gotten away with as much of yourself as you did. I'm sorry, Toby. We got a lead on where Sailor John was, and we were racing him down the line. I understand, Dustin. It's just unfortunate, to say the least. I know catching Sailor John is a top priority, but there must be some order to this chaos. I'm afraid I can't continue to defend the Admiral to my friends when I know I've impeded his progress once again. The Admiral grimaced and walked away. Let me speak to Toby alone, said Sir Topham Hatt. He's had quite the accident. Dustin and the Admiral quickly left the scene. Toby was visibly frustrated. I needn't tell you that this is not how railways are supposed to be run, sir. Sodor is a proper railway. If I wanted this type of nonsense, I would go back to the mainland to be verbally abused by diesels all day long. This admiral man can't expect us to help him one moment while he runs me off the line the next. I understand, Toby, but I need the admiral here right now. I don't expect you engines to completely understand my position as controller, but the railway is not doing well, Toby. We are in trouble. Well, of course we are. We've spent months looking behind our cabs in hopes of spotting that vulgar pirate. No, Toby, I don't think you understand. The railway is in trouble. Big trouble. Toby gasped. Oh, I think I know what you're getting at. I had no idea, sir. I was only thinking about myself, of course. 
I'm terribly sorry, sir. I shouldn't have... No, it's all right. You engines are here to pull the coaches and shunt the trucks, and I make sure everything else works out. But the truth is, it hasn't been working out for quite some time now. Sailor John's previous adventure here caused a lot of strain. The Great Railway Show was magnificent, but Sodor bore most of its burden. The Arsdale Railway is barely keeping along. And, unfortunately, we happen to wreck a lot of engines and freight cars on this island, all of which adds up. The truth is, I don't have the money to repair you, Toby. Wonder why Winston hasn't returned? Why Bertie isn't around? Why Vinny's still at the steamworks? I thought that's because you don't like Vinny. Well, yes, that is true, but never mind. I need the Admiral here to find the treasure on behalf of Sodor, so that we can continue operating as a railway. If he doesn't find it, and Sailor John gets it instead, well... Everything makes a lot more sense now, whispered Toby. I'm sorry I didn't stop to consider all of that. It was rather selfish of me. Relax, Toby. You are one of the few engines who can appreciate what I've told you here today. But I don't want this getting out around the island. We are hanging on right now, and that's all that matters. Any more bad news will only make things worse. I think I will have you stay in your shed for the time being until I can find a way to get you repaired. I'll have Thomas look after Henrietta until you return. Thank you, sir. That means quite a lot to me. And Toby hobbled slowly away. Later that day at Tidmouth, Dustin arrived with the Admiral. Percy glanced in their direction, but didn't say a word. What's the matter, Percy? Everything all right? Yes, everything's fine, Dustin. Have you eaten any of my other friends today? Oh, right. I guess you heard about that. Listen, I didn't mean to. What's all this about, Percy? You know we would never mean to do something like that. If it's anybody's fault, it's Toby's for stopping on the line in the middle of the day. I've told you, Engines, how I need your help out there, and what Toby did wasn't very helpful. Percy glared at the Admiral. Running engines off the line makes you no better than Sailor John. That's what he did back in the day. And you know what we did? We sent him packing, something you should consider. The Admiral glared crossly. Dustin felt very uneasy. I think it's best you find another engine for your conquest, Admiral. Apparently, I have not been the right engine so far as we haven't caught Sailor John yet, and I won't lose all my friends over this. I hope you understand. The Admiral was speechless. He realized he no longer had Sir Topham Hatt's engines on his side. That night, Toby struggled to fall asleep in his lonely shed. How could it have come to this? The railway and this kind of trouble... What will we do if we don't get the treasure? One thing is for sure, I shouldn't be the focus of repairs. That money should go to something else to keep the railway going. Oh, Toby, old boy. Either you do this, or it doesn't get done. I think it's finally time. And Toby rolled slowly out of the shed and into the night. The next morning, Sir Topham had arrived with Elizabeth. Toby, I've come up with a repair plan. Toby, Toby, my word, where has he gone? He couldn't possibly be out pulling a train right now, could he? Not a chance. He could barely move along the rails yesterday. He about fell apart after that wreck. Well, this is perplexing. Maybe he'll return later today and I can discuss this with him. I hope everything's all right. I wonder if the other engines have seen him. But they hadn't. 
It was like Toby had vanished into thin air. Did you hear, Thomas? Toby is gone. He hasn't been seen since his crash yesterday. Well, that's surprising. I'm in charge of Henrietta while he's away, and I wanted to say goodbye before he left for the works. That's the thing, Thomas. He isn't at the works. Sir Topham Hatt has been looking for him all over the island. Thomas was puzzled. Toby is not the type of engine to get up and leave without saying anything. I hope everything's all right. Just then, Stanley puffed in. Thomas, Percy, I have some grave news. I was pulling the midnight mail last night and, well, I saw something very disturbing regarding Toby. What is it? They asked. I think, and I'm not entirely sure because it was really dark out, but I think I saw Toby being pushed away towards the mainland by a diesel. Percy gasped. Oh, no! The Diesels have abducted Toby! He won't last long over there. You know how the mainland treats old steam engines. We must do something to get him back. But Stanley was nervous. Again, Thomas, I'm not sure exactly what I saw. It could have been an old brown van or something. But I heard that Toby was missing and I wanted to tell somebody. Just then, the station master spoke up. Thomas, you're wanted at the mine near Wellsworth. Direct orders from Sir Topham Hatt. Sounds serious, whispered Percy. What are we going to do about our friend? Leave it to me, Percy. I'll tell Sir Topham Hatt what's happened and we'll send out a search party right away. Toby's done so much for us over the years. This is the least I could do. Let me know if you see anything else. And Thomas puffed quickly away, determined to find his friend at whatever the cost. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 253, Thomas's Crown Affair. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting apprehensively at Wellsworth Station when Thomas raced in. I'm here, sir. The station master at Ellsbridge said you needed me. Yes, Thomas. I have some bad news to report. I cannot find Toby anywhere on the island. I have searched high and low with Elizabeth, but we haven't had any luck. Do you know where he is? I don't, sir. Percy told me that Toby hasn't been seen since yesterday. And I also fear that in his damaged condition... Toby could be vulnerable to tricks from engines on the other railway. Sir Topham Hatt was confused. What engines would want to play a trick on Toby? Thomas remembered what Stanley had told him at Ellsbridge. Perhaps if there were some certain engines that would take advantage of a crushed steam engine who was unable to move very fast. What are you getting at, Thomas? Sir, I fear that... that Toby has been taken away to the mainland by a diesel. Stanley said he believes he saw it happen last night. What? Thomas, this is a very serious accusation. Are you saying that Toby has been removed from Sodor against his will? I don't know for sure, sir. But it is very unlike Toby to suddenly disappear without saying a word to anyone, especially you. We have to find him before it's too late. Sir Topham Hatt took a deep breath and sighed. Thomas, I know your intentions are good, but I can't possibly panic the rest of the railway with this news. You need to do some additional searching here on Sodor before we accuse the Diesels on the mainland of stealing one of our own. If I were to say they abducted Toby and it ended up not being true, it would ruin an already rocky relationship with their railway. Thomas was nervous. I understand, sir. I'll start looking for Toby right away. 
All the drama with Sailor John and the Admiral has made the engines very scared. We fear that our railway is no longer safe. Sir Topham Hatt put on a brave face. Don't you worry, Thomas. We'll push through this together. I was originally going to have you help Jack and the pack excavate the rest of the mine here, but that can wait. Just do your best to find Toby. Thomas raced eagerly away. You didn't tell him what you told Toby, sir. Why? Don't you think the engines ought to know that the railway is in trouble? I can't introduce more confusion and hysteria than what's already out there. Sailor John's nowhere to be found. The Admiral doesn't have a way to get around the railway. Now Toby's definitely missing. This is all going to come to a head soon enough. Meanwhile, Sailor John stood longingly by the sea, watching the wind gauge on top of Captain's shed. God, I've never seen so many days without a single breath of wind in me life. This is infuriating. I'm all set and ready to go with the treasure. I just need some wind, any wind at all. As long as that lifeboat doesn't spot me sailing when the chance arrives, me and me treasure are home free. Just then, Thomas puffed by. I know Stanley said he saw Toby taken away to the mainland, but Sir Topham had his right. We should start our search here first. Sailor John gasped as he heard the unmistakable sound of a steam engine coming closer. Gar, who goes there? Turn around and never come back. This is... Oh, what did I say last time? Oh, yes. I'm the ghost of Captain Callus, and I'll be sending you to a watery grave if you proceed any further. Thomas smiled. That sounds like Toby's salty impression, all right. Toby, where have you... Oh, cinders and ashes... Was that the treasure? Ah, me treasure! A vast me hearty, and just who do you think you are? Sailor John! Eh, I remember you. You're one of the engines who came to save your friend last time. Thomas didn't know what to do except blow his whistle as loud as he could. Help! Someone help! I found Sailor John! Oh, you won't be taking me away. Care for another race around the island? If the Admiral can't catch me, then neither can you. And Sailor John hopped in his truck and sped away. Oh no, he got away again. But at least we know where he's been staying. Look at this. This is where the treasure must have been buried. Only now... Thomas looked down the long track. The cargo car was nowhere to be seen. That was the treasure, all right. Even Sailor John said it was. But where has it gone? I wonder if it hit one of these bumps and flew into the sea. Ahoy, Thomas! I heard some shouting over here. Is everything all right? Captain, did you see a cargo car go into the water here? Oh, Boy, I haven't really been looking for a cargo car, but I'll start my search right away. Thomas smiled. Great, the treasure is somewhere nearby, all right. I must tell Sir Topham Hatt immediately. Meanwhile, the controller of the railway was at Natford Station. Have any of you seen the Admiral recently? I must talk with him at once. Usually he's around right now but the engines weren't interested. That man has worn out his welcome, said Mavis. Yeah, all he did was say what a hindrance we were to his investigation. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. I know you engines are not happy with the Admiral, but I must speak to him now. Just then, Thomas raced in. Sir, sir, I found the treasure and Sailor John. Well, Sailor John got away, but what else is new? But I know where the treasure is. 
the engines gassed. Sir Topham Hatt's top hat nearly fell off. Are you sure, Thomas? Where did you find it? It's near the search and rescue center. I think the area is called Pirate's Cove, if I remember correctly. It's been ages since I've been there, though. Pirate's Cove? Well, why didn't we start looking there first? laughed Hank. Sir Topham Hatt was overjoyed and quickly climbed aboard. He was right in front of me, sir. I came through this opening in the ship and hit a truck that had something sparkly on top of it. I think it was the treasure. Hmm, and you believe it derailed and spilled into the ocean? Well, I don't see it anywhere else, so that's where it has to be. Sir Topham Hatt smiled. Never mind about Sailor John's whereabouts. If we can locate the treasure, this whole ordeal will be over with. Just think of all the gold and jewels. Why, even King Godred's legendary crown could be amongst the spoils. This will save the railway for sure. Save the railway, sir? Oh, never mind me. Captain, get your search and rescue crew ready for some deep sea diving. Maybe we can have Rocky's crane arm hoisted up. Just then, a strong gust of wind suddenly blew in. The wind gauge rattled back and forth furiously. In the distance, there were dark clouds on the horizon. Is that a storm? asked Thomas. It looks nasty. Yes, I think it is. Quickly, Captain, we must investigate as soon as possible. If the wind picks up and the waves become choppy, we'll never find the treasure in this weather. Captain quickly zoomed away. Just then, Stanley puffed in. Oh, Thomas, Sir Topham Hatt, there you are. Any luck finding Toby yet? Thomas gasped. Oh, bother. I haven't spent any more time looking for him. I got distracted by Sailor John in the treasure. Do you have some news? Yes, that's why I'm here. I have a message from a strange engine at Vickerstown Station. He wants to talk to you, sir. He says he knows something about a steam tram from our railway. It has to be about Toby. Yes, you're quite right. Oh, dear. Uh, Thomas, you stay here and make sure they retrieve that treasure. And once they do, don't let it out of your sight, no matter what. Stanley, I'll need you to take me to Vickerstown at once to meet this engine. We haven't a moment to lose. We must work quickly before that violent storm arrives on Sodor. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 254, Rocked by a Hurricane. Sir Topham Hatt and Stanley rushed into Vickerstown Station. The wind was beginning to howl outside. Thank you for the ride, Stanley. Now where's this engine that wants to talk to me? Over here, sir, said Rosie. His name is Hurricane. Sir Topham Hatt walked over and looked at the long red engine. Hurricane, he muttered. That's a rather fitting name considering the weather outside. The engine smiled. Sir, I work at the steelworks on the mainland. I've never been to Sodor before, but one of my friends, Merlin, has been here several times. I have something to tell you about one of your engines. It's Toby, right? Brown square tram engine with the number seven on his side? Yes, I was in the yard near your bridge to the mainland yesterday, and I saw him being pushed away by an orange diesel. I've seen a lot of different engines in that yard over the years, but never your square tram engine. He was very damaged, and he limped along the rails. He looked nervous, afraid. He looked uncomfortable, sir, like he didn't want to be there. Sir Topham Hatt was very concerned. 
Yes, that sounds like Toby, all right. Do you know what happened to him next? I'm afraid not. The diesel kept pushing him along and they disappeared from sight. Wait, an orange diesel? gasped Boko. Did you catch his name? No, there are a lot of orange diesels on my railway, and they all look really similar. So one of the shunting diesels from the Great Railway Show came to Sodor and stole Toby. I'm afraid I'm at a loss for words. This doesn't make any sense. Well, thank you, Hurricane, for this information. I can't believe you came all this way to tell me that. Well, there's more to the story, sir. I originally came to tell you about something else. But I saw this Toby engine in the yard while I was waiting for the points to change. Sir Topham Hatt was confused. What else is there? Hurricane sighed. Things on the mainland have changed in recent years. Of course, steam engines like myself are in constant danger there. But I work at a steelworks that is gated and protected, so I don't have to worry too much. But lately, it has gotten a lot worse. Steam engines have always had it rough, but now the diesels are starting to suffer. What do you mean? The diesels have run the mainland for quite some time. Are you saying that they are no longer in control? Locomotives are not as popular as they used to be. Everyone on the mainland gets around on roadways in their own cars. The trains are empty because no passengers are riding, and the diesels that pull them are beginning to fear for their livelihood. I think they realize that their time may be up sooner than they thought. Rosie shivered. That's terrible! I know those diesels over there aren't the nicest, but every engine deserves to have a job. There are some new electric engines that have already begun taking their places. The diesels are going to be in trouble. I just wanted to let you know about what was happening, since you have done such a great job preserving steam engines here for many years. Well, that's extremely kind of you, Hurricane. I appreciate the notice. I will definitely look into this further. But right now, we must get Toby back, and we must recover the treasure. Just then, the whole station shook as the wind raged on outside. I'm not going out there if I don't have to, whispered Boko. You're right. This storm is a serious one, and the passengers won't want to travel in this kind of weather. Finish your trains at once and seek shelter immediately. You're welcome to stay here until the storm passes, Hurricane. Come along, Stanley. We still have lots to do. And Stanley puffed out of the station. Back at Pirate's Cove, Rocky was being put into place to recover the treasure. The weather tracker nearby was going berserk. This wind is ridiculous, cried Thomas. Sir, I don't know if this is the right time to do this. Rocky's crane arm won't stay still. I'm afraid he'll get blown over into the ocean. We must at least try. The future of the railway depends on it. Just then, it began to rain hard. The storm was upon Sodor. It's just some coins, probably, muttered Stanley. Surely the treasure can't be worth all this trouble. Just then, Flynn pulled up. This is some of the worst weather I've ever seen, sir. I think we all need to seek shelter immediately. Sir Topham Hatt gazed sadly at the edge of the pier. He wanted the treasure for the railway so badly, but he knew the safety of his engines came first. Right then, everybody inside. Find somewhere safe to rest until this passes. Thomas, take me to Natford Station at once. I'll need to go to my office and cancel all of the trains for the rest of the day. 
Thomas was very happy to get moving again. He puffed as hard as he could and arrived safely back at Knapford. I can't believe you went out in that, cried Edward. You're very brave, Thomas. I'll be inside my office, everyone. If you need me... Just then, the Admiral walked up. He looked sad and tired. Sir, I need to talk to you right away. Of course, of course. Please, come inside. No, I think it is better that I tell all of your engines. I have decided I must conclude my search for Sailor John and the Sodor treasure. I have worked valiantly over the past few months, but I think it is time for me to begin another discovery. I have never come up empty-handed in a search before, and it truly devastates me to tell you all this. Your engines are not very happy with me right now, and rightfully so. I have not fulfilled my promise to you, Sir Topham Hatt. I knew Sailor John was a crafty pirate, but never like this. Perhaps it is my old age that is getting the best of me. So, sir, I have packed up my things from the Scarloe Railway Cottage, and I will be returning to my ship once the weather ceases. I hope you understand my reasoning. Sir Topham Hatt nodded. I understand, Admiral, but I urge you to stay just a little while longer. I don't like to assume anything as important as this, but we may have found the treasure after all. Once this storm passes through, I'll show you everything that you helped us achieve. The Admiral smiled. That is wonderful news, sir. I'm very happy there is a silver lining in all of this. I only wish I could have one last shot at Sailor John. He has eluded me for so long, and it would be nice to finish what I started. Just then, a cargo truck veered into the yard and smashed into the signal box. Out steps Sailor John in complete disgust. Gar, you're a terrible truck who doesn't steer right when the wind is wrong. I just need to get back to me hideout and find that treasure before... Just then, Sailor John noticed Sir Topham Hat in the engines. Arr, well, uh, hello. Thomas smiled. There you go, Admiral. The Admiral couldn't believe his luck. Sailor John! he bellowed. You and I have some unfinished business. Ha ha ha! You and what chariot, Admiral? Where's that yellow sparks machine you had the other day? There's no catching me without an off-road vehicle. Ha ha ha! Quick, take Elizabeth and follow him. If you get him up into the mountains, she'll prove her worth. I guarantee it. Go quickly before he gets his truck righted. The Admiral smiled. Thank you, sir. Come along, Elizabeth. There's no turning back now. And the two raced into the storm after Sailor John. The engines were amazed. That was very kind of you, sir. We all know how much Elizabeth means to you. Maybe she's the magic touch that the Admiral needed this entire time. All we can do now is wait here for the storm to pass. The Admiral might even have a chance to catch Sailor John, if we're lucky. The engines managed to chuckle. Outside, the weather was turning increasingly violent. Suddenly, in the distance... Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. Is that who I think it is? Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 255, Paranorman Activity. The island of Sodor was experiencing one of the worst storms it had ever seen. The trains were stopped, the engines were stranded, and Sir Topham Hatt was more nervous than ever. I don't think we'll be going anywhere anytime soon, said Edward. 
I guess we better prepare to spend the night at Knapford. Just then, through the torrential wind and rain, Thomas spotted something. Cinders and ashes! Is that who I think it is? It was Toby and Norman. The engines quickly made room under the canopy. Toby! exclaimed Sir Topham Hat. We've been so worried about you. But what are you doing with Norman? asked Thomas. Did he find you? Well, yes, I suppose you could say that. It's a long story. Well, it's not like we have anywhere to go. Tell us what happened. Toby smiled. All right, then. After my accident with Dustin, Sir Topham Hatt recommended I go spend some time in my shed. But I got to thinking about everything that's been going on lately, and I realized there was something I could do. I needed to go see an old acquaintance on the mainland, but as you can tell, I wasn't in any shape to get there. I decided to leave in the middle of the night so that no one would raise a fuss. Well, that certainly didn't work, chuckled Thomas. We've been so worried about you. We thought something terrible had happened. Stanley said he saw you being dragged away to the mainland by a diesel against your will. Well, that's only partially true, chuckled Norman. The engines gasped. So Stanley was right. He did see a diesel taking you away. But it was you, Norman? All this time, I thought it was a mainland diesel that came and stole you. Yeah, me too. Me three, added Sir Topham Hatt. A steam engine from the steelworks alerted me to your condition, Toby. He was very scared for you. It's all right. I was fine the entire time. Norman saw me struggling along the line and I told him about the situation. He volunteered to pull me to the other railway so that I would get there quicker. And it's a good thing he did. I was in no shape to make the journey alone. So Norman's help was greatly appreciated. Well, keep going, said Gordon. Did you find what you were looking for? Oh, right. Well, yes, I did, but it gets a little more complicated after that. Uh, sir, may I speak to you? Alone, please? The engines looked around. What? You don't want to tell us, Toby? Yes, Toby, it's quite all right to tell the other engines. There are no more secrets to keep. Speaking of which, I believe we found the treasure and we might have a shot at capturing Sailor John. Oh, that's great news, sir. Especially regarding the treasure. I know how important that is to you and the railway. Precisely, Toby. Now I want you to tell everyone about who you went to meet. It was obviously so important that you couldn't wait to tell any of us where you went. But Toby was unsure. This acquaintance, sir, I'm not really sure I should be telling everyone about all this. But the engines were not going to be denied. Tell us the story, Toby. We've got nothing else to do until the storm passes. Toby looked around nervously. It's all right, said Norman. Go ahead and tell everyone. Okay, then. Well, the engine that I went to see... Sir Topham Hat! Sir Topham Hat! cried the station master. Oh, bother! What is it? Can it wait until the end of Toby's story? Great Waterton just sent us a message and said Elizabeth and one of those Crosby Station cargo trucks were spotted up in the hills near their station. They want to make sure Elizabeth isn't in any trouble. No, it's fine. I loaned her out to the Admiral. But dear me, Great Waterton, that's quite the distance. They're up in the hills by the Scarloe Railway. I have a feeling I should go make sure everything's all right. That wouldn't be a bad idea, sir. 
Although the weather is still terrible, I would be willing to take you there to see if you could help. That would be wonderful. Toby, I'm afraid your story will have to wait until I return. Let's go, Thomas. We haven't got a moment to lose. And Sir Topham Hatt climbed aboard and Thomas rushed away. The wind and rain were still a terrible distraction, but he chugged all the way to the Scarlowy Railway. Here's the station, sir. I can't go any further. If you see them, you might have to finish the rest of the journey on foot. Just then, Rusty pulled in. What are you two doing in this weather? It's terrible out here. We could ask the same thing about you, Rusty. Don't you ever take a break? Of course not. This rain is the perfect catalyst to take out one of our bridges. And I have to be first on the scene if something happens. Say, you haven't seen Elizabeth around, have you? We were hoping to uh, help her with something. Actually, I just saw her chasing after a Crosby Station cargo truck near the Hilltop Station. I think they were on their way to the logging area high up in the mountains. Take me there at once, cried Sir Topham Hatt. I'll take you as close as I can, but the track doesn't go too far. It's roadway only. Good luck, sir, shouted Thomas. I'm going back to Knapford where it's safe. I'll see you soon. Sir Topham Hatt immediately hopped aboard Rusty and they set off. Look up there, sir. I think I see Elizabeth through the fog. And it looks like there are two people up there. What are they doing out in this weather? I bet that's Sailor John and the Admiral. And Sir Topham Hatt was right. Sailor John's old cargo truck had finally given out, and he was stranded at the top of the mountain. Give it up, Sailor John. It's over, and you know it. The treasure's already been found. Because I found it first. I did all of the hard work, and you came and stole it away from me. Just like everything else we've ever shared. The Admiral walked slowly forward. John, we must stop this fighting. Look at all of the chaos and calamity that has been caused because of this feud. You started it. We were such great pals, and pirates, like brothers even. You'll never be an admiral, no matter how hard you try to leave the past behind you. It was a mistake to become a pirate like you. But fortunately, I realized my error and left as soon as I could. Watch the saws on the ground, sir, said Elizabeth. Those blades are very sharp. You were my first mate. I trusted you. I'll never forget the day you got the crew together and mutinied me, all alone out there in the middle of the ocean. You were out of control, John. Being a lifelong bandit is no way to make an honest living. The crew and I couldn't take it anymore. We didn't leave you completely helpless. No, you didn't, actually. You gave me that talking boat that could never learn to shut his trap. But what you didn't realize is that you gave me the start of me brand new life. The one I live today. We were on our way to Sodar when you threw me overboard. Do you remember? The amount of treasure and plunder we discover here and share together would have been beyond anything we could have imagined. And yet, you threw our friendship away. Just like that. You won't be taking me back to Sir Topham Hatt, so stay right there. What are they saying? asked Rusty. I can't hear anything over the wind. Me neither, but they better be careful. That's an active logging company up there. Come on down, John. Let's go somewhere a little less precarious and talk this through. Never! and Sailor John lunged at the Admiral. The two struggled mightily at the top of the mountain. The wind! Watch the wind! shouted Elizabeth. 
but it was too late. Suddenly, the two lost their footing, and they both plunged over the side. Oh, no, cried Sir Topham Hatt. They've fallen into the waterfall. But with the increasing wind and rain, it was impossible to tell where they had ended up. Sir Topham Hatt searched everywhere by the track, but he couldn't find anything. Stay here, Rusty. I need to go up there and rescue Elizabeth. Be careful, sir. Watch your footing. Sir Topham Hatt took the long hike around and eventually made it to the top of the falls. Elizabeth, my dear, I'm so glad you're okay. Did you see where they went? she asked. I saw them both slip, but I have no idea what happened after that. I didn't see anything at the bottom. Come on, let's look again. Sir Topham Hatt drove slowly down the hill, but when he returned to Rusty, there was no news. I don't understand, sir. They fell from the top and we saw them splash into the water. Where did they go? Well, this waterfall is very big and strong. We'll check back when the storm ends, but right now we need to find some shelter immediately before the wind knocks us off balance like it did to them. Although the weather was ferocious, Elizabeth managed to slowly make her way back to Natford Station. She was exhausted when she pulled in. Look, it's Sir Topham Hatt. Sir, sir, did the Admiral finally capture Sailor John? No, I don't believe he did. And Sir Topham Hatt recalled the story to the engines. So they're both missing? Yes, precisely. Until the weather clears up and we can get a better look at the terrain, I don't want to make any assumptions. Dear me, I am very tired. Perhaps we should all finally get some well-deserved rest, yes? And the engines agreed. When they woke the next morning, the storm was gone, but the island was a mess. Trees were toppled, signals were down, debris was everywhere, but most importantly, everyone was all right. Well, we've cleaned up from storms before, and we'll do it again. It will be a slow process, like usual, but I'm just glad all of my engines are all right. Sir, asked Thomas, what about the treasure? Oh, yes, we must reclaim the treasure at once. Later that day, Rocky was once again placed on the pier, and he began to dive for the sunken treasure. Try as he might, though, the search turned up empty. I've looked all over the siding, sir, and we've checked by my shed as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's anything unusual on the bottom of the ocean floor in this area. It's all just rocks and coral. If there were a treasure here, we would have found it by now. Sir Topham Hatt was very disappointed. Yes, I suppose the search and rescue team never fails. I'm guessing the weather messed with the waves and blew it off course. Well, thank you for your work. I think it's time I went home and saw my beautiful lady hat. After everything that's gone on these past few months, I think we all need a few days of peace and quiet. Captain felt defeated as well. It's never fun to come up empty when you're searching for something like that. I only hope Sir Topham Hatt understands that we tried our best and did everything we possibly... Oh, hey, would you look at that? It's the treasure just sitting in this cargo car here. Sir Topham Hatt, look, I think it's the treasure you were searching for. Sir Topham Hatt was astounded. Well, I'll be... Where did this come from? We just had Rocky on the line not a few minutes ago, and now... Captain chuckled. I think it's best not to question how it got here, and just be happy it finally showed up. Yes, I'll agree to that. 
Well, it looks like the railway's going to be okay after all. I'll finally have enough money to repair my engines and everything can get back to normal. In the following days, there was no sign of the Admiral or Sailor John, and the engines gradually went back to work. Sir Topham Hatt still couldn't believe that the treasure had been found. We owe this discovery to the Admiral, who worked tirelessly for many months, exploring every lead he got and leaving no clue unresolved. Although he is not here in person to share in our good fortune, we will always remember what he did for this railway. The treasure will be going on display at the Sodor Museum, and, very thankfully, I will start getting all of you your necessary repairs. Thank you so much for being here, everyone, and may we all have a very calm and prosperous upcoming holiday season.